I'm Holly Constant. And I'm Maddie Hockaday. We really love Parks and Rec, and we really love behind-the-scenes details. So we're researching everything from DVD extras like deleted scenes and commentaries. Plus, interviewing cast and crew who actually worked on the show. We also bring on guests and friends to geek out about everything Parks. So join us, you tropical fish. This is literally the best Parks and Rec rewatch podcast. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. The way I wrote Born and Raised at the top of my screen, it kind of looks like Boom Roasted. Oh my so God. So when I opened it, I was like, That's hilarious. Oh, why? Yay, because B and R. <laughs> Okay. Well, oh my gosh. Welcome, everyone. We are here. We're doing it. We're back. Yes, it's been a minute, but we're hoping that you were able to catch up on all the episodes you might have missed. Go back and listen to some of your faves. Mm-hmm. Or just take a break. So, like, you know. Yeah, that too. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we could start with just even like saying what was happening in those two months. Um, and I'll go first. Number one is that I originally took off um, the month of May for uh to apply for like new jobs and if anybody at my office is listening I feel like everybody knows no one listens from my office (laughs) whatever everyone knows whatever anyway so (laughs) we're all looking for new opportunities all the time anyway so um but I took off the month of May because I had a show uh, a musical theater show community theater show the prom musical if anyone is familiar and I also wanted to look for new jobs and then I ended up getting after that ended well kind of in the midst actually I start I ended up getting a regional theater musical theater gig which is great and I really needed to accept it because or not needed to, but just really felt so viscerally that it was the right choice because it was um, a paid show and it was rehearsing during the day. It was professional. So then that happened and all those shows were in June. So May and June ended up being, which was really funny. I was meaning to tell you about this as well um, because my vision board technically says um, get an or day job that I love. And mm-hmm. I think the universe was like, you didn't say whether it should be permanent or not. And I was like, oh, my God, hey. that is like I did get a day job that I loved, you know, that's awesome. So yeah. um, I think that that also really reminds me that I need to be specific with what you want from God or the universe or whatever you'd like to call it. Um so mm-hmm. that's something to think about. Um, but yeah, I've been learning a lot about myself, too. And um, yeah, I'm just like, I can't believe that it's almost July. Well, by the time this comes out, like it will be July. So it's just nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Craziness. So do you think that this has been like a a like nudge for you to get a job that's a day job in this industry, even if you're not acting in every single job you have? Maybe. I definitely think that it would be nice to be in the industry somehow or doing something that I love in that realm, like in the entertainment realm. But more than anything, Mm -hmm. if I'm being completely honest, I just want to work from home. Like, I just, the environment of where you are and the space of where you are is so important. And I feel so much better and like comfortable and like my nervous system is not attacked at home. <laughs> and yeah. so that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. But I do want it to be a job that I'm interested in. And I want it to be a job that I can learn something because I kind of feel like that's something that I might be lacking a little bit is that I don't know that I'm I, I just think I'm done learning at that job. I think I've learned everything that I mm-hmm. really want to and I could learn more, but it's not something that necessarily interests me or is passionate. So that's kind of mm-hmm. my requirements right now. I want to work from home. And I want to be like 10% more interested than now. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, being in the theater, though, was really good. Having that be a day job. But it's wild. I mean, it's just like, you know, you know, day jobs or looking for jobs in general is already so exhausting. So imagine doing that every three months after a show is over. You know, it's just like gnarly. And with the writer's strike and everything, TV film isn't really happening right now. So um this was nice to keep myself occupied um and obviously now the podcast is back so we'll be doing more of that but you know so it's been good though I'm learning a lot about myself so I'm very grateful yeah yeah that's good What about you uh yes so while Holly was uh busting her ass for two full months uh (laughs) doing what she loves which is what we're very excited about I was quitting my job and (laughs) being unemployed Yes. Um, uh, being unemployed for three weeks and getting a new job down in Phoenix. So 
we used this time off to move our little family down to Phoenix, move into a new place. Um, so yeah, it's been crazy and tiring and wonderful. And I'm trying to learn this new position. I've completely left behavioral health. Um, so get ready for me to be like way more analytical in this than <laughs> I was before. Cause I'm going to miss the psychological part of my job. Yeah. Um, so I've already been, uh, accused of therapizing my boss like three times. Oh my God. By who? By her? By, by him. Or him. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. He jokes about yeah. it. Yeah. Like he'll, he'll send little texts that says, boom, social work. Oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of so nice that you uh, have that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, um, everybody at work, like, I want to tell you more specifically about it, like later. Cause if it's something that like, you know, they have an Atlanta office, just a, just a side note, Ooh, but know. they're just so cool. The whole, whole company, like they have a huge, um, professional development for women, um, section. So they're all about getting women in big leadership roles. Um, and we're at over, I think it's like 40% of the companies now women mm. in, a, in a construction company. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that, I mean, and everybody's just super cool. You have to take a personality test to get the job, um, to show that you're going to be like a team, a, a team member mm -hmm. rather than there for yourself kind of deal. So, mm -hmm. um, it's been good, but it's different cause I'm not, you know, working with kids every day. This is the first time since I've left college that I'm not working with kids. Wow. Um, yeah. Huge transition. So, huge. But it's, um, it's been, it's been good. So, um, the only other thing that's been happening, which is news to Holly too, I'm going to send you a picture because I sent, I sent this to you. I'm sending it to you, uh -huh. but it wasn't going to get there in time today. So I'm sending you what is coming in the mail for you. Oh my God. What? Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is, is there, are you serious? <laughs> I sent a gift to go with it. Wait, but are you serious? Wait, like this I'm isn't really a joke. Serious. This is not a no, joke. No, it's not a joke. <gasps> oh it's not God! a joke. That is so insane! Oh my I god! Know. <laughs> oh my god! That okay? I don't. Can we even do the podcast? This is stupid. <laughs> do we? I mean, I need. Mean, I can't breathe. <laughs> I know. My heart is beating so 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 fast because <gasps> I was so excited to tell you, and I had to. I had to do it here, Holly. Like it just was so on my heart that I had to do it while we were recording the podcast. Oh my god! Tell tell everyone. What you sent, or should I do okay. it? No, you do it. You do it. Okay, we'll post the picture oh too. God! But I, <laughs> I, I, I thought it might take you a second because we we call you Aunt Holly to Fenway and Cubby. But I sent Holly a picture of a shirt that says "Auntie, I'll be there for you" in like the Friends font. Yeah. Um, along with the Jim gif when Jim Jim finds out that Pam is pregnant. Oh my God! So basically, if we need to spell it out even further, Maddie's pregnant. <laughs> This yeah. is gnarly. I don't even understand. Like, what? How, yeah. I'm just like keep staring at these pictures. Uh, <laughs> that is so wild, Maddie. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Were you so guys we have another about little park these? pal. Yeah, we do. Oh my god. Yeah. He or she is recording with us today. Oh my god. <laughs> or they. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they. Yes, exactly. Oh my so, god. Um, yeah. So it's a. Uh, it's been crazy. I. What was your question? <laughs> um, like when did you find out, and were you planning on this, or was it kind of just oh. whenever? So after our honeymoon, we kind of just said we're gonna put it up for God to kind of decide. Yeah. And just kind of let things happen, and and we think that it was when I put my notice in that. Oh my god! Like my body was like, okay, we can do We're it. Ready? <gasps> yeah. Oh my god! So, that is so wild. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, it's really up and down. It's yeah. um, it's been yeah. So I'm not nearly. My mom was so so sick with me and Connor. Like could not keep food up. Uh -oh. Like she had to get IVs and shit. She was on bed rest for them like a really long time. Like it was bad. And we were both born super premature. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put my life in perspective of that. Like I'm not living that. Yeah. Um, but up until about maybe a week or two ago, I was nauseous literally all day, every oh. day. Um, it sucked like trying to be active or anything. So moving sucked. Yeah. Ass. Like that was awful. Um, but Ivan is really good. He didn't let me lift anything. We hired movers. Yeah. Connor's here. So he helped. Um, and then, uh, now I'm doing better with 
not being nauseous, but I hate eating. Mm. Like nothing sounds good to me at all. Nothing that's good for me. Right. <laughs> like I want ice cream and Lucky Charms. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a, uh, yeah. So it's just, it's been, and it's, it sounds like such a menial complaint because it's like, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but like, I don't want to plan dinner. Being in the grocery store for longer than five minutes makes me want to throw up. Yeah. Like, I just hate it. I already we don't want to plan dinner. And I, I hate know, grocery <laughs> shopping as it is. So uh, I would imagine I, right. like physically from that, like, you know, getting mm-hmm. sick or whatever. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is so wild. Yeah. So you so told your are, mom. And how, what did she say? How did that all yeah. go down? So we did a little um, reveal for everybody. Okay. Uh Connor was the first one to know. We wanted to tell our siblings before we told our parents. Yeah. Um, and we got Connor a mug that said promoted from pa, uh, fur uncle to human uncle. Aww. Uh, yeah. He thought we were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is a screwed up joke, you guys. Oh, my God. Um, well, I mean, that's so funny. I feel like all of us are just like, no, that's not serious. Wait. Because yeah, right. <laughs> all of those things, like the things that like the picture or w- that you sent me and that mug could be things that are funny that also right. could be like things from like social media or whatever. Like now everybody's calling um, babies on or have you wh- like babies that are on TikTok and like their moms that are posting them are like, hey, TikTok mm-hmm. aunties and like rand like auntie is just like a thing. You know what I mean? It's right. just like a phrase that we use now and uncle yeah. and whatever. So, oh, my God. Anyway. OK. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. So we told his bro- his older brother. He's not older than Ivan, but he's the older of the two younger brothers mm-hmm. with his girlfriend. We got them a onesie that said, congratulations, um, you're now babysitters. And then we said, oh, oops, we mean Tio and Tia, which is aunt and uncle yeah, in yeah. Spanish. Um, we got his other brother a shirt that says Tio, like an uncle, only cooler. Yeah. Uh, his sisters, we got them a onesie that said, you can stop asking now. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so it's wild. It's been literally since we got together yeah. that they've been asking for a, a little yeah. niece or nephew. And then, um, so we told his mom and she cried and we got her little onesie that said, um, hola abuelitos, so which cute. is grandparents. And then my dad, we got him a newest member of the band onesie. That's so cute. Yeah. And then my mom, because she's in Singapore, this gutted me that like I couldn't, she was the only like family member we couldn't tell in person. Oh, that sucks. But we sent her a box with a little pair of booties and a, the book, a copy of the book that she read me almost every day that I was like when I was a baby. And we said, um, hi, pop, poppy and Mimi, can you hold on to these, um, until I'm ready? Mm. And so, yeah. So they already have their grandparent names because um, my step siblings have kids. Okay, gotcha. So that's yeah. cute. That's so cute. But yeah, she was she was in complete shock, and now I get a text message every day from her, like asking me how I'm feeling, yeah. and she's super on top of it. So oh my god, that is so crazy. That's so amazing. Yeah. Did you want it to happen like at this time, or where is it just kind of whenever? I know you said like I, let God decide, but what was yours like ideas? I think we were like. <laughs> Yeah, because it is kind of fast, I guess, if you think about it. It was kind of fast, but also it happened two days after I didn't have a job. Right. I lost insurance literally the day we found out. Yeah. Um, So we didn't have health insurance the first appointment we had. So we didn't get an ultrasound. They they didn't have an ultrasound tech for us Mm -hmm. that day anyway, which I thought was crazy. Um, But then you have to pay extra because you don't have insurance. Um, I was unemployed yeah we didn't know where we were going like we there was so much up in the air that was like we kept it to ourselves for probably two or three weeks before we told anyone because we were like yeah everybody's gonna be so judgy about no they're just gonna ask you a lot of questions that you're not a lot of questions that i'm like i'm doing now which (laughs) is not judgmental but definitely is you know you don't you you get to decide whether you want those questions asked or not so that makes total sense right well and you're somebody who can who can ask those questions. And I think for us, it was more, we didn't have answers. Yeah. Like we didn't know what we were going to do. Like you're already so, asking those questions to yourself, you know? Right. It's, that's what it was, was that we are already stressing out about it. We yeah. don't want other people stressing us yeah. out. So Cause like to other I people, think, you have to like sugarcoat it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you don't know how to phrase yeah. it. Yeah. Like we have a plan when we don't. Right. <laughs> And to be frank, so, I feel like nobody does. So that's this is true. Definitely, no one knows what they're doing. No, no one. It doesn't get better, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it really does. You just learn how to cope. Honestly, uh, yeah. that's how I feel. Really, truly, yeah. you know. 
that is that is accurate but i mean so. it's also one of those things too where i don't know when you let the i i always think of this metaphor too and um like you know how when it's really hot outside and you have to let the um hot air out before you turn the ac on so that it'll like cool faster i feel like if you mm-hmm. let out the bad energy sometimes the good energy comes in so like quitting the or i mean the easier way to say that is like when one door closes whatever the fuck that one is but like you know what i mean it's like when something happens you close that one chapter it leaves room to open another so sometimes it's Mm -hmm. just again it's not our timing yeah no and i mean the the benefits that i get from this upcoming company company is is more than i ever would have gotten in my last one um like the maternity leave they give and they let you splice out your maternity leave. You don't have to take it all at once. Mm. Like if you'd like, so there, it's just everything, everything's falling into place. Yeah. Um, That's so, so amazing. I think we just, we were very excited to find out there was no part of us that was like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> what are we doing? It, we were very excited. It was just more, okay, now Figuring let's sit down. How are we going to, yeah. How are we going to do it? So, um, currently the baby has a December 25th due date. Oh my God. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But we, um, we have an ultrasound, our very, very first ultrasound tomorrow. Oh wow. So I'll let you know updates once we know more information. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. That is so crazy. This is such a life transition this year, man. Yes. 2023 fucking is crazy. Yeah. It started out I don't know about you, but real rough. For me. I mean, I think it started out rough for everybody. So, I mean, yeah. these last four years have been true insanity and true tests of like our, you know, strength, <laughs> both mm-hmm. physically, mentally, yeah. emotionally, spiritually, all the things like it's just nuts. So it I is, feel like yeah. this year is the year that people are finally starting to like heal from 2020 kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's turn it around in general. <laughs> yeah. So or like just deal with things that we've talked about this too like just deal with things that they hadn't even thought that they were struggling with you know what I mean so mm-hmm. that is so wild oh my god well I'm so happy for you that's so amazing thank you tell Ivan I mean I'll text him but tell Ivan congratulations as well oh my god thank you this is so exciting I was so excited to like tell you because you know so many of my close friends when we got when I got engaged to Ivan like it was like oh I get to call all these people and you were there so I didn't get to see your surprised face. Oh, yeah. You know, that's true. So like getting to show you this, I was like, oh, this is yeah. cool. I didn't get to do this, which was perfect. Right. I wanted you there for the engagement, right? Yeah. There's no like, no oh, regrets. she wasn't there. So I could yeah. do, yeah, <laughs> no regrets. But it was like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to get to see her face. Well, that is so crazy. Oh, my God. And now it's being recorded and it's just here for our history books. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like every other person I've told, I have a feeling. Oh, my God. That is so wild. Who had like the <laughs> favorite reaction do you think oh gosh I don't know you'll have to everybody think about that and let me know I really later. like yeah I'll have to yeah, I'll have to think about it I've my idea we haven't posted it on Facebook and I think we'll wait a while mm-hmm. so sorry um I think we'll wait we'll wait a bit like I don't mind it being posted on the podcast like that's totally mm-hmm. fine um because the people who I wanted to tell like are in the circle you know kind of. yeah so um in person like in person yeah, or yeah. you know myself they they know um or they will tomorrow because i'm sending some people an ultrasound is the way that they're finding oh my out. god that's so <laughs> um, crazy yeah so i'm um, like the bridesmaids i'm gonna send it in the bridesmaids oh shop. that'll be cute that'll be really cute yeah okay so um but yeah so that's a that that's fine that it's posted here but i've thought about splicing together all the um surprise like the reactions yeah as the way we put it on facebook oh my god so. that is so crazy i know because yeah. at first i was like oh it's a friend's thing that's so cute <laughs> and then i read it and uh, what no <laughs> what's happening <laughs> that's so lovely oh my gosh yeah. okay well you'll have to tell me what names you're thinking of and all that stuff too oh yes later. yes or now i don't care for sure but either way <laughs> we, we can we can hold it off so that we don't i don't continue to take our podcast time well but we'll still be looking forward to that oh my god yes. okay well um i don't even know how to move forward okay well all right let's just go ahead <laughs> All right. Which okay, I'm so sorry. I'm just now realizing this. The yeah. first podcast that this this baby is technically part of is uh-huh. called Born and Raised. I know that is that's kind of cute. Great. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we'll have. This is my um like sign to make merch though, and I should we and that way right? I can have a baby onesie that says like new park pal or something stupid you know not stupid but something funny yeah. cute and stupid you know what i mean 
<laughs> yes. I love, I love fun it. and cute and stupid. That's my new motto. Something something punny and yeah. pun related. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, my like God. It. So precious. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Well, all right. We're just going to try our best. I'm going to try my best to just move on because I have a really exciting thing, too. But I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. So, okay. okay. Born and Raised, Season 4, Episode 3. This was written by Aisha Muharar, directed by Dean Holland. Both of these people have worked on Parks in the Office and, like, a bunch of other things. Um, they've also already been uh, on Parks from what we've reviewed in the past. Um, Aisha made an appearance on Parks. Um, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. She was the one in the episode where Anne goes to get baby stuff, which is ironic again, because babies. And um, she says, these are the only bibs I've seen without Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s face on them. And the worker there is like, what? That's Aisha. That is the one who wrote this one. So anyhow, she wrote 14 episodes of Parks. I didn't realize that. It's pretty amazing. Mm hmm. Um, the ones that we've seen so far are Kaboom, Park Safety, and Camping. She's also a producer on Parks, and she's a producer on The Good Place and Hacks um, on HBO, which have you watched that yet <laughs> or seen that? Oh, my God. It's such a great show. It's on HBO. Um, it's amazing, and you guys should just watch it. It's a ton of um, Parks people. It's also what's his name from Broad City that I can't remember his name, but um, he's in a lot of That's those lot. episodes. Uh, yeah, he's great. That's great. He actually helped create Hacks, but um, he was on Broad City, too. And then we all know about Dean Holland. He's our guy. So we'll just skip right up. Um, Okay. So I have a couple things before we get to the summary. Um, First of all, I watched another webisode. Um, They are on the DVDs. Uh, And just as a refresher, um, if you listen to Office Ladies, you've heard them talk about it, too. But basically, they make these, like, two- to five-minute webisodes, post them to the NBC site. Um, They did this for The Office, too, and a bunch of other shows. But last one – so they – I guess they pick which episode – yeah. episode to make a webisode about because all of the webisodes are about road trip when Andy and April go to the Grand Canyon. Um, each of them are like two to five minutes long and they're all related to that. Okay. It's almost like they're outtakes or something. Um, but last one was how there was this like spider and April was super freaked out because they couldn't find the spider. So Andy just like lies and says, OK, yeah, I got it. But then he didn't really. Um, and it was way funnier than the way I'm describing it. But that's basically what happened. And then this time they had them going to the four corners, like on their stop to mm-hmm. the road trip, which is the spot where four states meet up in the United States. But a Apparently, April says it was a six hour detour and April didn't want to drive. So she just took Andy to a random side of the road and told him it was the four corners. And he goes nuts and is like, oh, my gosh, we're in a different time zone. Like, look, you're in one state and I'm in another state for like. And it's like this two whole minute long thing of them going back and forth. And April looking at the camera being like, this isn't the four corners. (laughs) It is hilarious. Um, And it's really cute because. April does feel guilty about it, and I kind of appreciated that they showed that side of her. Um, So there's that. Anyway, so that's the webisode, and I'll keep telling you about all of those. Um, Oh, and then... That's so funny. Good. I'm going to play a little bit of the webisode. Um, it's like 28 seconds, two clips that I thought were really funny. Wow. Oh, my God. Right there. We are in the four corners of the United States of America. That is the only place in all the U.S. where four states connect. We got Utah, Arizona, and Colorado, and I want to say Oregon. Oregon. Boom! Boom. All four states connect, intersect right here. Why isn't it marked again? Because the government doesn't want people to know about it. She's just basically, like, it, there is a, a whole monument, I think, at the at real one, and there's literally right. just a patch of grass where they are, and so she just keeps <laughs> going on and on about, like, nope, uh, they don't want us to know about it. That's so funny. Um, okay. Also, not Oregon. Just oh so yeah, what is knows. the other state? It's got to be New Mexico. Let's see. Everyone probably already knows this. Four Corners, Nashville. No, dummy. I don't want that. <laughs> okay, Colorado, southeastern corner of Utah. Why didn't it just tell me that? Northwestern corner of New Mexico. Correct. Um, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico. 
Where's the other Arizona. One? And then Arizona. Yeah. Why is it Arizona yeah. written? He, it's just a picture. He, Anyways. He got the other three. Just <laughs> yeah. Oregon and then is not like, even Oregon. touching those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that she goes with it for him. Exactly. Okay. Here's the second part. I really wanted to go to the Four Corners. It's like a six hour detour. And I'm grouchy from driving all night. So that random spot in the middle of nowhere is Oregon? now the Four Corners. Arizona. Colorado. He's just behind her, like Colorado. skipping Jumping. around, making sure that he's going to each individual state. And I just think it's so funny. That's exactly what I pictured him doing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This is a big deal. Um, the next one, because I was researching and look what you can buy. I found that too. And you bought it? <laughs> I bought it. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> you can Yay. buy Pawnee, the greatest town in America by Leslie Nope. Right here, everyone. It is the best thing ever. And I'll post this. I have like my little marks that I have to show you all of the different things that is mentioned in the episodes that are in fact in the book. Because the main thing is that I wanted to see, it's just credited as Leslie Nope writing it. And it doesn't say who actually wrote it. And it doesn't really wow. even say in here either. It just says Universal City Studios Productions, you know, like copywritten, whatever. Um, um, but it was, you think it'd have to be somebody from props, right? Well, I don't know. It could be some of the writers, too. That's you true. You know, and they could have just mm-hmm. compiled it. But I just thought it was so funny. Um, there is a deleted scene where Donna says it's literally all about waffles. And there's a whole spread with pictures of Leslie eating waffles. And she was like, waffle sell, Donna. Publishing 101 is what she says. And I took a whole. All right. I think that was one of my little parts that I was going to show you oh yeah these are the pictures of her eating waffles oh my gosh (laughs) with the whipped cream falling out of her mouth yeah exactly and she's just (sighs) smiling so big because um the table of contents has like you're spending 24 hours in Pawnee what do you do and it's like 8 a.m enter the shower (laughs) it's like and then it tells you all the different places you can go but the main thing I wanted to read um was the dedication um and I'll try to read a little bit fast but I don't care you guys this is really important and then at the end I'll read the afterward where she's talking about the waffles because there's a whole like it's longer than what she read Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, this is the dedication of the book. To the good people of Pawnee, and to the people who have worked hard to make this town great, and to everyone anywhere who loves his or her hometown or his or her adopted hometown, and to every person who understands the importance of citizenship. And she goes on, like, to tell, to thank everyone, really. Anyway, and to the founding fathers and mothers of this great country, and to everyone who has fought in any way to keep this country free and safe, and to the framers of the Constitution, and to everyone in the entire world, and to the makers of Brain Blast XX Extreme NRG drink, which has done a bang up job of getting me through these last 55 hours of working on this book with no sleep. Okay, that's enough. I just tried to go to sleep, and that's a non starter with the by my cow 256 plus ounces of Brain Blast XX Extreme NRG drink coursing through my veins. It Yikes. honestly feels like my eyeballs are spinning around in my head like tiny basketballs on a Globetrotter's finger. <laughs> So here's some more. This is dedicated to my family and my friends and the good people of Pawnee and Spider-Man and every living creature in the universe, except turtles, whom I find condescending, and to whatever mad genius scientist came up with Brain Blast XX Extreme NRG drink, because damn, and to the good people of Pawnee, and most of all, to Pawnee, the greatest town in America. And by that, I mean to the actual town, not the book Pawnee, the greatest town in America. I'm not dedicating this book to itself. I mean, I feel really weird right now, but I'm not that weird. And finally, (laughs) to the good people of Pawnee. I should probably read this over once just to make sure it's good, but I currently have what I would describe as double reverse tunnel vision, and it's hard to focus, so I'm just going to assume it's fine. (laughs) The end. (laughs) Love it. The ramblings of someone who's been on an energy drink. Literally! It's so good! Oh my god, I can't even handle it. There are also, there's also this um, page that Chris had, um, and he wrote an essay um, <laughs> and it's really funny Love the it. two pictures one picture is um, how do I show this is 2011 and then one picture is 2044 basically saying that he's like nev- or 2040 rather like he's not gonna age he's never gonna age Um, But I thought it was really funny. Um, Just a quick editor's note. She wrote, Chris's original essay was unreadable. It's not that it was poorly written. It was actually really good. But every other word was in all caps. And it made my eyes cross a little. (laughs) I can see that. But like the 
detail of this, man. They have Pawnee's Medical Center and Anne is in it because she works there. Uh, ben wrote an essay on why he lives there or why he chose to stay there, essentially. And, um, oh my gosh, Trish is in it. Like, the picture of the uh, the pageant, um, the beauty pageant is in it with Tom holding her hand or, like, you know, kind of with the fist pump moment like she won. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, it's so wild. it's actually as thick as it looks yes. in the show. Yes. Wow. And it's Dedication. like, it's kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's like kind of a rough texture on the paper. Also, side note, um, the, the official full title is Pawnee, the greatest town in America, written, compiled, researched, typed, collated, proofread, and run through spell check by Leslie Nope. <laughs> amazing but oh my god i yeah i had to buy it i saw that on amazon you guys you can buy them on amazon there it was like 15 dollars or something maybe even less than that and i was like this is considered research i have to get it so Mm -hmm. i did i love it oh my gosh um side note have you watched severance yet or heard of severance I've heard of Severance and I've seen the trailer, but I have not watched it. And I know it's Adam Scott. Okay. Yes, it is Adam Scott. And so the introduction it, or like, yeah, the introduction is um, like a stop motion sequence. And there's this kind of fan theory going on that it's the um, the like finished Ben, you know, stop motion. From hip, he's and it's, it's so good. Actually, you should actually just look up the intro. Um, stop what you're doing right now and watch it because it's so good, actually. And you'll see what what I mean. So. Anyhow, I just wanted to share that note. Wonderful. Okay, well, now I I have summary written whenever you're ready. Perfect. So, as part of her campaign, Leslie writes a book about Pawnee that will hopefully help her get more votes. But when it's claimed that Leslie's lied in her book, the Parks team all work together to help Leslie get the coveted Jones Book Club sticker. Meanwhile, Anne attempts to connect with Ron and April. Nice. Yeah, this is a good one. We've got a lot of stuff going yeah. on. This cold open. Oh my god, it's one of the craziness. funniest ones ever. Yeah, yeah and I love we it. always talk about it. Um, yeah, Leslie's doing promo for this campaign and for this book on the NPR station of Pawnee. And I love this guy who does the ads. I think he's mm-hmm. awesome. He's like saying a corporation is a nonprofit that puts umbrella hats on homeless people when it rains. Love it. <laughs> what a funny detail. Those- yeah, and those uh, most of those things are to keep the sun off your face, so they don't really cover that much of your body, so your right. shoulders are definitely still getting wet. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. So good. So uh, good. And then Derry Marbles. We yeah. love. I think it's the first introduction of him, because he comes back every now and again, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize I wanna... that this was a bit that he took over for... It says he took over for David Parker, who left for eight months to study <laughs> migration patterns of squirrels. Like, I did not remember that. Yeah, I I remembered that, but I didn't remember that it was the first one. Oh, okay. I thought it was later. Yeah. Well, which then, is stupid. I should have known. No, that that it, the and first then at one. the end, it talks about um, like how someone else is going to be taking over for him because he's taking over for somebody else. And I didn't realize that that was kind of a running bit that everyone was like following or like, right. you know, covering for one another. It's so funny. Well done. His nasal voice is perfect. I don't know if that's the actor's real voice in in real life, but if it isn't, like that's great. It's so good. Voice acting. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, you know he's a voice actor, right? I did. I didn't know that. Oh my god. Okay, I have some amazing news for you. I did a breakdown okay. on Dairy Marbles, but I knew this Love because it. I had already looked him up. He is the voice of Homer Simpson. Of course he is. <laughs> he is uh, iconic, iconic voiceover actor. Uh, yeah. He has done so much work on video games and cartoon for adults and things like that. But he voices Homer Simpson and a handful of other voices on the show. Um, I still can't get over that he is Homer because he does, again, such great voice acting. He doesn't sound like him. Yeah. You know? No. No, but you can picture the his character in Parks and Rec being yeah. in The Simpsons. Yeah. That's true, too. That's true, too. Like Derry Marbles' yeah. voice, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but his so name is Dan Castellaneta, and he has also done four episodes of Family Guy, but he's done a lot of appearances on live action shows as well. Um, he did an episode of The Mindy Project, and he's done a bunch of things as Homer Simpson on other shows, which is amazing. Um, and I also did reach out to his agent, but apparently he doesn't do interviews, so... I don't know if he, she's just saying that to me because whatever. And at this point, I sometimes will like try to sugarcoat and like be nice and just like not say things. But I kind of wanted to just tell you guys the scoop. So that's what I was told. So. Yeah. I <laughs> Which know, he I could respect. also be over it. What's that? He could also just be over that's it. That's what I mean. Like The Simpsons has been on for like ever. Yeah. And I'm sure he's had to do millions of 
Oh yeah, t- so many things. I mean, that is insane how long that show has been running. Like that's ridiculous. And they tell the future. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's lot. It's kind of scary. So. <laughs> Anyhow, she's promoting the book, and she says she wrote this as a reference for herself for the campaign, and after they removed a lot of the poetry and unicorn pictures, then it was good enough. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I also, um, um, I didn't realize, too, that in the show it says that Trish is, like, makes an appearance there. Um, they talk about it in the actual episode as well, and, but I didn't really mm-hmm. even realize that until I was looking through this book, and I was like, oh, hey. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, the, I want to go back to the guy who... Uh, Eight month did eight months of squirrel oh, watching yeah, uh-huh. for the migration patterns, just because I was interested to see where you would go for this. Yeah. Well, squirrels don't really, I don't think they really technically fit the migration yeah. like, vocabulary because it says that they stay where they are, but they'll like move around an area. Um, I did find that the gray squirrel will migrate but no further than 50 miles hmm. which wouldn't even get me from phoenix to prescott right so, so <laughs> like what was this guy doing for eight months? an hour of or whatever <laughs> right so like what was he doing that's so funny i that wonder was just if- his out because they haven't seen him since right <laughs> totally that is hilarious i wonder if they knew that if the writers knew that squirrels don't really migrate and mm-hmm. that probably is the joke and i just missed it i just thought it was was funny at, on the surface, but to actually think about it, because these people are a lot of Harvard people. <laughs> it's right. Like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Who don't have to Google if squirrels migrate. Right. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, I also love this line that I often use um, from Leslie, where she says, one could say that, but should but one? But should one? <laughs> I love that, too. Yeah, totally. So good. <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, there was a deleted scene, basically, also with alternate things that Derry says. And Leslie says she's promoting the book all over town. Um, And like to kind of just, I think, just say a little bit more of what she was doing, because you can't really actually tell it. But I think they cut it because you don't need to really explain it. Like, you don't Mm -hmm. need she doesn't need to have that line. I'm promoting the book all over town, blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to say I do have to give a shout out to the audio design crew, because in this deleted scene, she gets all close to the mic and you can tell that it gets louder and cleaner. And it's just this like really small detail that I noticed um, because that, you know, NPR has that kind of vibe and that sound Mm -hmm. and that quality of, you know, studio sounding vibes. And I just thought that was really interesting. Um, So shouts to the audio people sound design people and also in the deleted scene she says she wrote 10 books because she thinks that's how much Pawnee deserves but she was told to edit it down to one (laughs) that's on character oh my gosh 10 full books like one book is enough um but to write 10 of them woof but from Mm -hmm. a lady who has like 80 binders I get it (laughs) fair Um, fair oh yeah so Oh, I already said that. That Derry says someone else will be filling in for this one person who's taking over for another person. Um, and then the lesbian comment that they made. Well, they are lesbians. Like, first of all, that accent or slash we already said that. But his voice is so good when he says that line. Mm-hmm. But I remember watching this being like really confused because I was like, why is this funny? Isn't that kind of offensive? And then I realized they're making fun of the people that say that. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think that's what it is. At least that's how it is in all of that. the other um you know, shows that seem like, why would they say that? Um, but, anyway, and also the music really is inaudible. So that's what kind of, <laughs> like, it's not great. <laughs> yeah. So I did like the band name Nefrotides Fjord. <laughs> yes. That was yes. awesome. I, and just to clarify for people, I had to remind myself, because I know who Nefertiti is. Like, she's a real person. Yeah. She was um, the queen of a pharaoh oh, in okay. 18th century Egypt. And I guess she was known for, oh, she changed it from a poly-religious system to a mono-religious. Mm. So instead of having several religions in Egypt, she brought it to one oh, where they all worshipped the sun god. Okay. So that well, that's what she did. I remember learning about her. I was like, why did we learn about her if she didn't do anything? So I literally had to Google like what she did. Yeah, that like, makes that makes sense. I don't remember what she yeah. did either. I I, that, yeah. I knew that name sounded familiar, but I didn't even research mm-hmm. it. So that's great information. Yeah. And a fjord, if people care, is like an inlet to, it's a water inlet. Mm. And then um, also, just so people know, 
the words that they're singing are the words to the Norwegian national anthem. Really? Yeah. It's like the first two lines are the the Norwegian national anthem. Oh, my God. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Where did you find that? Uh, just researching. It was just online? Oh, my God. I yeah. totally missed Reddit. that. Reddit's where I found it. Oh, okay. 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 Love so that. we're trusting Reddit. Well, I mean, they probably know. I, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping that it was somebody who speaks Norwegian. It was like, I know that song. Yeah. Um, it does make sense. I mean, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds, if if I could put a vibe to it, it sounded like a Scandinavian language on top of like African like music. Yeah. Yeah. Is the vibe like I tribal. get. tribal. Yes. Yes. Tribal. Exactly. And I have to say, I'm glad they started with, with this one. Because after you hear jazz plus jazz equals jazz, <laughs> this does not sound that bad. <laughs> You're like, I would listen to this oh my over god. the other one. That is so funny. Jazz plus jazz equals jazz, jazz equals jazz. Oh my god, that is so funny. Yes, I love this uh, little runner here. I love that they come back to it again. It's just mm-hmm. building that small town of this is the NPR uh, station. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my god. One hundred percent. Well, I love all that research. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Um, it looks like Leslie now is handing out her book to everyone in the parks department signed. She wrote a long three mm-hmm. pages to April, which is so cute. And I love that line of Jerry's like yours just says get well. And then she's like, something's off. <laughs> You're not sick. <laughs> Are you not yeah. sick? <laughs> yeah. Weird. I like that. She also wants them to buy additional copies. Yes. Like people need two ver- two copies of this. I know. Exactly. In their house. So, oh my God. So um, good. I can't get over Chris's hair. Still. Oh, yeah, I know. The wig. The wig. Little... Which we've discussed in the last episode. Yes. But I think because it's been, and we've I've watched episodes of this since we've been on break. But when I sat down to take notes again, I was like, oh, bro. I know. It's not your look. Yeah. La- I feel like last, um, yeah, last episode was more jarring to me. And I, maybe that's because it was the first one or whatever. Mm-hmm. But so what was it again that we decided he sh- he had to shave his head so he, they put the wig on to look more like the officer in that other movie he was doing? Mm-hmm. So, okay, yeah. yeah. Drew, he was Drew Patterson or Peterson. I can't yeah. remember what the last name is. So crazy. I think yeah. they also dyed his hair a little bit in that other movie. So that. Yeah, it's like the thing. more it's grayish, like, I think. Yeah, grayish, blondish kind of vibes. But yes. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit of a gym and season whatever moment. Um. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The only thing for me is that Jim could pull it off because Jim was kind of like, I don't give a fuck. Like shaggy. But, yeah, you're yeah. right. But Chris's character is like very put together. Mm-hmm. Very gel so. back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris says that he's a speed reader and I just don't believe it. He says he can read with full comprehension. I know that's funny, but I was like, no, Chris, get out of here. Mm, no. <laughs> also, um, fun callback kind of, uh, if you are a listener of the podcast, because we talked about it, but Tom enters with his sound, the blah, 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 blah. And, re- and that was a deleted scene where Tom says, you have to have a signature sound. Mm-hmm. And Ben is like, why do we need that? Aren't why? they just going to recognize you that like recognize you from your face? And he's like, no. And so I thought that was great. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if it was great. like meant to do that, but anyway. Yeah, no, I love it. I he comes in with more swag as he does now that he's part of entertainment. So enter, wow, entertainment seven twenty. <laughs> I hate these drawstring bags. Like I don't know if you've uh, ever had yeah, them the before. Basketball ones like, or whatever. Yeah, they are like. They're good for like a year or if that, and they're, then the strings like start to like break mm-hmm. or whatever. Like I had a lot in high school and they just like don't survive. But yeah. that I, I looked at them. I was like, that, that thing's not going to survive, especially because it's an entertainment 20. Yeah. 20 yeah, thing. totally. Yeah. So. He's just a little insane. And then the pillowcase never stopped dreaming. Tom Haverford. I never do. I know. Chris Trigger. I love that. <laughs> that was so good. Um, do you think point. that for Joan Calamezzo's book club that they are parodying Oprah? Because I feel like that's what they were going for. I, I 100%. Yeah. Okay. Because Oprah 100%. has a book club and I feel, I don't know, um, like I can't speak to whether the books on the book club are good or not, but it does seem like no matter what book you do um, with Oprah, it's going to be a bestseller. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So. Well, because it's Oprah. Yeah, and, of course. And J- Joan is Pawnee's Oprah, basically. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I was also thinking, so this book that uh, she's ta- that Leslie's talking about in the book club is called The Time Traveler's Optometrist, which I thought, I don't know if you remember, th- uh, I thought it was kind of poking fun at that Rachel McAdams movie, The Time Traveler's yeah. Wife. 
Yeah, which was, which was a book originally. A book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just love how they're like making fun of all of these little pop culture references. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, um, I think it was IMDb where it said that that was actually a reference to to oh, the time, okay. traveler, time Traveler's Wife. Nice. I mean, it came around, so. out around the same time. So I would, mm-hmm. yeah, totally imagine that. Oh, also, yeah. this is too deep, but like, why does she own these books? Like, she clearly has them, like, to show us. I know. I feel like she owns She has them. two. <laughs> she has, she has two the one copies. with the sticker and one without it. Why? <laughs> I get this visual representation, but I'm like, but you bought it. <laughs> Which maybe is just proving the point further. <laughs> yeah. I also, I love this look that Leslie and Tom give Ben when he's like, Joan has a book club. Yeah. <laughs> their, their faces. They are like, just, how dare perfect. you not know that? Crazy. Yeah. Um, but Tom is in charge, or Entertainment 720 rather, is in charge of getting Leslie this sticker for her book. Uh, and mm-hmm. But Joan got an anonymous tip apparently that there's a factual inaccuracy. I want to know who snitched. That is never yeah. mentioned. And I want to know who told. That's a great question that I didn't even think to ask. That's, yeah. Who the Who's hell the found out? <laughs> and a part of me is like, that should have been a callback for like, maybe someone else that's running against her or something. But yeah, but. But again, not- I think we talked about this with Johnny, um, the one who plays his, um, Leslie's campaign manager, how that mm-hmm. was kind of poking fun at um, uh, Obama, the birth certificate thing. And so a part of me feels yeah. like they didn't really even think about like the, you know, the plot of yeah, it they all. didn't it flush was, it out right it was more so just to have that in there mm-hmm. um so but it's still because well, bobby's still st- too stupid to do it by himself right and bobby isn't is like way further down the line you know what i mean which i can't mm-hmm. oh, wait yeah. for him but anyhow I know. oh my god no um yeah i don't know that's great we should speculate wildly speculate wildly says. that's my favorite line that is my favorite that's line so because good. we have it's said so it good on the podcast so many times because I don't have all of the information. I have most of the information, but I don't have all the information. So we need to speculate wildly half the time. So mm-hmm. yeah. anyhow, um, I also love that Leslie is telling everyone to fact check. Um, and then she tells Jerry to go on the road and interview everybody because it makes me think of like, who all was he interviewing? <laughs> like, yeah. I also go on the road. Like Pawnee's not that big. I don't, I, it's too deep. I'm getting too deep on it. Yeah. But like, I think like he's how going far did to go? yeah. Muncie as well, which again, I will be able to tell you with my new book, I'll be able to think of some or see who he interviewed. Um, yeah. But anyway, so she tells Jerry, but then Anne comes in all excited and energetic to help Ron in April. And even I like, cause the whole thing is that in your summary, as you said, April's tr- or, uh, Anne is trying to get close with April and Ron, even if it's just a five second conversation. But even mm-hmm. I was like, Anne, like take it down a notch. We don't need to, we don't need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> if you have to put this much effort in, is it worth it? Yeah. I get where she's yeah. coming and from. Yeah. She makes a good point where she's like, you know, I've known these people for a long time. Like, why can I, why are we not connecting? And it's because it's Ron and April. Like, right. They don't connect with anyone. Like, just yeah. let it go. <laughs> right. So. So. Anyway. It, it makes for a good storyline, though. Totally. Like it does. It actually does. Later. <laughs> um, okay. So now moving on to where Ben is talking to Joan at the show, if you are. Yes. And she's introducing him, herself to Ben. And he's like, we've met before. Yeah, like, we what had are a whole you- last interview where you like grilled me for being right. the mayor of Ice Town or whatever. <laughs> exactly. But I just yeah. love that she thinks that she's right. She's like, no, no, it doesn't ring yeah. a bell. Um, side oh, note, Joan. again, I'm just telling you all the tea because whatever. But I did message Joan uh, or Mo Collins as we mm-hmm. as her real name is. Um, and I literally said because I I didn't realize how many times I had messaged her, uh, which it's not that much. It was like three times, I think, um, without a response. And so this time I was just like, hey, Mo, this is the last time I bother you. I promise. And I was just like asking my normal questions. And I was like, either way, I hope that you're doing great. Blah, blah, blah. Because. If they're not responding to me, I just feel like I should just stop messaging them. You know what I mean? Mm. A part of me feels like, well, it's up to them to tell me, but I just, it's been, it feels weird now to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> but yeah. she did send a voice memo that one time and that was really nice. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, sometimes that's, that's all I can ask for and that's great. Um, but yeah. she did a phenomenal job in this and so many critics yeah. and everybody like really took notice of her performance um, when this was coming out originally when this aired yeah so it was really very wonderful. joan heavy episode totally so they she gave her a lot it. to play yeah. with yeah 
Um, Amazing. Okay, Tom comes in and sings his little moment. Um, the whole like, what was that? Um, I'm trying to the find worst the worst to in this guy. Can I tell you, when I first watched this episode, I did not know that was the song he was singing was like the David Guetta one, the Akon one. Mm-hmm. I just like, I don't know why, because when I hear the song, I know it's real. I'm like, oh yeah, I've totally right. heard that. But for whatever reason, when Tom sings it, I'm like, that's not real. He's just making that up. That's so inappropriate. I can't believe he's well, saying that Because it sounds to like what he would say. Yeah. You know, it sounds like a total Tom line. Totally. Ugh. Anyway, without being disrespectful. So much chest hair. Oh, my God. Tom. Tom. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> he's in his like chill, his chill phase. Like, yeah. He's not dressing like a business owner anymore. He's dressing like. A millennial entrepreneur. Yes. Kind of vibe. The hipster you know? self-starter yeah. um, startup. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Um, this relationship with Tom and Joan has been somewhat talked about uh, in previous episodes. We've seen little glimpses of it, but in this episode, it gets even crazier and nastier and weirder, um, mm-hmm. which is so funny. Uh, but I love uh, Tom's line of, um, I'm cute together with everybody. Because Ben says, yeah. wow, you guys are really just together, like, sarcastically. But uh, anyways. Yeah. Um, also, at th- this little, his line about writing coattails. I have pause with it because he wants to be this guy who's known. Right. Right. But if you're writing the coattails of someone, typically you're in the background. You yeah, don't really that's true. get known. So yeah, I, I think he's more, he's probably referring to like, you know, the celebrity people like Kim Kardashian or, um, I don't know, the basketball wives kind of vibes, like where they're like, um, you know what I mean? They like still have a name, but yeah. they didn't like do, like they didn't, that wasn't their anything, original but. reason to get discovered, but because they have that tie in, they are more successful probably, or have the connections to be more successful. <laughs> So I think that's what yeah. he's talking about. Because he even talks about how the government was supposed to be just a connection making way to, you know, get his what he really wanted. So I think that's what he means. But I, I understand what yeah. you're saying. OK, I can vibe on that. <laughs> um. All right. So Joan is toying with her. Is she getting a sticker or not? That's really funny. Like she keeps messing with her as far as like yeah, what is this? The, yeah. Putting the sticker close to. Ew. And I just love that build up of when Joan is putting the sticker close to the book and Leslie's face is like, are you going to do it? Stick it. Stick it. Like she's being like friendly. And then she's like, no, do it. It's really cute. Yeah. Why is the sticker so big? Why is the sticker so big? It covers a whole book. It's insane. That's a great point. I love this line, but, too, of uh, the sticker legally determines like it's a legal fact. <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. Also, I want to know if they did a photo shoot for her because they have like a whole cardboard cutout and like a thing of her oh, holding the picture. And I would imagine because Perd said that they did that for him for the mm-hmm. Perd show. So I would imagine yeah. they had a whole day of or like at least a couple of hours of shooting um, like a photo shoot for for Joan Kilomezzo. Yeah, I, I don't great. doubt it. I don't doubt it. And then um, that line of we will speculate wildly because we learned that we don't know where Leslie Nope was really born. No yeah. research, just speculating. <laughs> love that. I love this. This fails like a gotcha journalism. In what way? <laughs> right there. You put gotcha way. over my face. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. And then the gotcha dancers come in. This is such an so iconic much. episode. Truly. Like, it really is. There's so much in this. It's so good. Um, I yeah. did a little breakdown on all the gotcha dancers. At first, I was not sure I was going to be able to find them because they're not technically listed on IMDb under the cast. They're listed as additional crew, quote unquote. They are oh, all interesting. I know. They are all actually dancers. So amazing, talented women. The first one that I found was Audrey Douglas, who has done a bunch of dancing and stunts. She's been in La La Land, Dua Lipa's music video. Uh, She's been in The Morning Show, which I think I remember the scene that she was in. Uh, And if you've seen it, I think it was when Steve Carell's character like turns 50. I think it's his birthday party or something. And they have like Mm. a whole uh, thing set up with dancers and cake and music. And it's like a Broadway musical moment. Um, Marty Short is in it, which is hilarious. Um and she's also on the Eras tour, Audrey Douglas, the Taylor Swift Eras tour. Damn. She's a dancer with Taylor Swift. Uh, Damn. Okay, so you've seen her in real life. I guess I have. 
of them. I messaged all of them, full disclosure, which like, hello, you know me. Of course I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't heard anything back, but that's okay. Um, I still like, you know, really thank them for everything. So that's amazing. Um, but that's so cool. I follow all of them yeah, on Instagram awesome. now, so I'll tag them. Um, and then the next one is Noelle Marsh, who has also done a ton of things. She was a dancer in Being the Ricardos, which I have not seen yet. Nicole Kidman and... Oh my God, I forgot his name, but it's um, I Love Lucy. It's about I Love Lucy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's in the new movie, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which looks so good. I want to watch that. Um, and she's in a bunch of others, but she's also a choreographer and has choreographed award shows and other projects. So that's really cool, too. Dance yeah, to well. me is so amazing. I respect dancers so much. They can just tell such a story. Yeah. So. Anyway, amazing. The third one is Kayla Radomski, who is an actor and dancer, and she also teaches dance, but she has a bunch of film and TV credits as well. She was in Little Mermaid Live, not the one that's currently out, um, but the one that came out in 2019 where Queen Latifah was um, Ursula. Anyway, uh, so she was in that, and she was a dancer on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is the um, you know the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, many other yeah. things. Uh, and then Chelsea Trail, who I think I'm pronouncing that right, who was in the movie Burlesque, which is that movie with Cher and Christina Aguilera, which has a lot of dancing in it. Um, and then she was also a dancer and pop star. I thought you'd be interested in that with uh, Sa- the one with Andy Samberg. Yep. I love him. And then and Lonely she- Island. I know. And then she was also in a Lady Gaga music video, which is awesome. And it looks like she's based in Norway now, which is really fun. So, oh, yeah. that is fun. So, all Heard gotcha dancers, we thank you so much, and you were amazing. It was so wonderful to see all of you dancing with the matching outfits, and then you see them in the background talking and chatting. And I was just like, those girls are so cool. I was really into them. <laughs> yeah, Joan got gotcha. so much energy. Down they put so much energy into it too. Totally, I love it. Yes, they were so committed. And I love that Chris sings this and Tom joins in. It's really lovely. (laughs) Joan gotcha, Uh, don't it hurt ya? Okay. I bet you thought you'd get away. I want to know who sings it. I was trying to find that out. Like, who is singing that? (laughs) Oh, yeah, that would be great to know. So I'll figure it out one of these days. Um, All right, so Anne gets the call, if you're ready to move on, that they're back at the office and they don't have to fact check anymore. Yes, however... We missed a scene before that. Okay. Which one? When April come or Anne comes in to the office. Or they're in the office already sitting together. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry. I just had no, a couple okay. notes there because um, I don't know. Have we talked about April's ring? I don't think so. Because I just wanted to mention because you see it very clearly when she's holding the book. Uh-huh. It's so perfect for her. It's just a gold band. That is and I cute. think it's yeah, I, I think, think it just fits her so well. Yeah. So I think I that's why I wanted to mention it cuz I was like I don't think we've mentioned this and it's it's such a a on character and on love story like vibe for them yeah. because it reminded me of Haley in One Tree Hill. Have mm-hmm. you seen One Tree Hill? I have. I have. I'm not yeah. I can't quote it like you can, but I yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say quote it. Okay, well, you know seen it. Sorry, it like the story's four times. a little bit more than I do. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I'm, I was the OC. It's like, I feel like it's Backstreet mm, Boys and NSYNC mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Once Your Hill and the OC. Like, you can be both, but you lean heavily towards the other. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, so, for me, like, Haley and her na- husband, I, I almost said now husband. It's like they're fake people. Um, no, they I got married it. when they were, like, 16, 17 in high school, right? And she had... A, almost the same looking band to April. And he later, her husband becomes like an NBA star mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Right. So he has money to replace the ring, but he never does. And I think there's just like this beauty of like our, our love started here mm-hmm. and we accepted each other here. Yeah. And this is where we're at. Yeah. And, um, there's something similar with Chip and Joanna Gaines. Oh, Do you know who they are? Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. uh-huh. It's, I think she has like a, a, I can't remember if it's her or if it's, it's her parents because I read her book and this was story was in there that I think it's her, but she has like a very plain ring and he tried to give her something more fancy once they made all this money from the TV show. And she was like, no, this is, this is the ring you proposed to me with. This is our ring. Yeah. Like I, this is what I want. And so I just thought it was such a beautiful, and I know that April's not a flashy person anyway, mm-hmm. but I just equated it with 
the simplicity like this is what their love is yeah yeah like this is what their love is and she's never gonna want more than that and she's not gonna ever want andy to be she's not pushing for him to be more than what he is and i think there's just such beauty about that totally that's such a great point i mean that's how their relationship started anyway like you were talking Mm -hmm. about you know what i mean like they never started as being flashy or anything and she always said that too she was and like when he was not having money to pay for drinks at the bar she was like i don't care i just want to hang out with you you know yeah that's really like a nice illustration of that also i have had something in my teeth for so long and i can't i couldn't see it it's this little black thing right there Okay, I can see it now, but it's not like popping out at me. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have told you. So I'm like, sorry if they see me like or hear me <laughs> picking at my teeth. Uh, anyways, yeah, it gets uncomfortable. The the only other line I have from that before we go back to the office where they can stop fact checking is there's tabs in April's book. Oh yeah, I saw that kind of like yours, uh-huh. and that seems so unAPRIL to me I that I was like, how much does she really care about this for Leslie? That she's actually like tabbing shit. And Ron's highlighting. I know. I saw that too. So a part of me is like, I don't know. A part of me, again, this is too deep. I don't care. A part of me is like, uh, did Leslie put those tabs in there for you so that you could know where exactly to look? <laughs> I don't know. That's, it could be. Could be. But no, so, I mean, yeah. you're right. I don't know. They're either both, way, they're, either, I think they're both trying though, a tiny bit. Mm-hmm. But okay, we'll get there when we get there. I have other things to say. Um, okay. Oh, no, this is actually perfect because the thing that I was going to say is after that scene where Anne gets the call that they don't have to fact check anymore because now they know that Joan got that inaccuracy that she wasn't born in Pawnee. Mm -hmm. And I was so mad at April for throwing down the book. She throws the book and runs out of Ron's office. And I get that that's like April's character. But I was like, how fucking dare you? (laughs) Yeah. What? That's so rude. Like Like you're. Yes, Leslie Your literally mentor? wrote you. A, I literally have the word mentor in here. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. wrote you a love letter mentorship moment. And now you're just having to pretend like you're a cool kid and you're so excited to leave. Rude. I hate it. Yeah. Rude. Anyway. I agree with that. I just needed to say that. Get that off my chest. So, okay. Um, yeah. Now we're at the Tom and Joan moment. I love this line or the way that he pronounces Joni. <laughs> What Mm -hmm. was that? It's so cute to me. (laughs) It's so whiny. I know. And Tom says they're going to take Joan to lunch now to persuade her to get the sticker. And she says, I'm going to change into something more tantalizing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Phoebe's saying hi, by the way. Hi, Phoebe. I thought I would leave the door open and just see how it goes, even though I knew she would come in here. But I'll I'll (laughs) still leave it open. Anyway. But, yeah, she's changing into more... And to more tantalizing things. And I was like, oh, my God, creepy, weird. But also, like, Joan, do you? But Mm -hmm. the thing that's really weird and awful is the cologne spray amount that Tom sprays himself with. I literally have it written. I am puking right now. That is so much cologne. Why? (laughs) Absolutely not. Ben's face was my face. I was like, Mm -hmm. why? Yeah. I really hope that was, like water in that bottle like for set purposes oh it had to be there's no <laughs> way you let anybody spray themselves that much oh my that's so gross god so because even two or three sprays is like that's a good amount yeah and you do the spray delay walk away right you don't just spray oh i've yourself never heard that face. saying i love that oh I mean, yeah that's it's, it's do, from queer I... eye oh amazing yeah oh my god i haven't, I've been watching I haven't used eye. this at all the way it's the so amazing. good have you watched the new season <gasps> No, but the, I, I have to be in the right mindset. So yeah. let me tell you, I've been more emotional, obviously. Yeah. And I'm not a big like crier, but like we, my brother and I are watching One Tree Hill together. I think I've told you. Yeah. We're like almost close to the end. And I've been like crying. And he's like, sissy, like, it's not that sad. I'm like, but you don't, but you don't understand. understand. <laughs> sometimes, you know what? So, I get it. I really do get it. Yeah. And sometimes it hits you in a way that you had no idea was going to hit you. Queer Eye so for real. sure, though. Like the oh, first hits one. You. Um, so the first one is a frat house, um, that they do. Uh, and I wasn't as emotional because I don't know. I'm just, they're all like, they're not frat bros, but they're dirty and messy boys. And I'm just like, I don't need it. But the second one is so good. Um, well, they just, they just pull at your heartstrings. They really do. I cried in the second one because it's this, um, lesbian gal who is like, had to hide herself because she's in a small Southern town and just mm-hmm. like, it's so good. Um, so I definitely cried. So yeah, I understand what you're saying. 
Yeah. So I, I, I have not been in the emotional state to watch that. Yeah. Um, it's tough unless though, I too, feel right? like I need because a good cry. Yeah, that's true. Unless you need a good cry. Um, but it is also tricky because it's like it makes you feel so sad and so happy at the same time. So most of the time it's yeah. happy joy, but it still is like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Feelings. Oh, yeah. It's I absolutely love that show. So that that's where we got it. And that's what Ivan does. Like he'll, he doesn't say it out loud as much anymore, but he even like sways his hips like Jonathan does. Yes. Like when he, when he walks away. Yeah. It's great. Oh my God. Love it. So yeah. Um, anyway, so that's the point. Yeah. It really Two or reminded- three sprays, spray delay, walk away. You don't need to be spraying yourself in the face. Yeah. Yuck. And it reminded me kind of of like the Axe body spray that people used to be so obsessed with too. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gross. Oh yeah. You guys, one spray, two sprays is enough. We'll smell it. I promise. And I think cologne yes. is so much more pungent than women's perfume. It's it just really so is. much more. And I didn't realize also, I feel like we've talked about this before when we were talking about Dennis Feinstein, but I didn't realize that um, the perfume ma- like mixes with your skin personally. So the perfume is going to smell a little tiny bit different on each person's skin. And I was like, what? And mm-hmm. it makes total sense because your DNA yeah. and your makeup is different. So and like you are we all have our own individual like odor naturally. So like, yeah, not bad or good or whatever. Just like our natural scent. And so mm-hmm. that combined with cologne. Anyhow, that was a long ass tangent that I did not know I was going to go on, but loved it. <laughs> That's OK. We're all here for it. And I'm sure everybody else was just as disgusted by the cologne thing as we were. Yes. So. Ugh. OK. So now Leslie's doing her tour schedule and she's reading at a bookstore and it just started and there's already questions. She literally just started. Um, And I feel like news spread so fast because they were just at the news station and somehow it got out within the next hour or so, I'm guessing, like on the way to the bookstore. Right. So does does Jane, Jane, does Joan air live? Because then that would make sense. Yeah, I bet it does. I bet it does. Okay. I would assume so. I'm going to say that makes sense. Because I'm sure... I'm, I'm sure people showed up to the, the bookstore just because they saw Joan. Right, right. And they were like, oh, we're going to go and Maybe it's and like even lady further sh- after. Shit. Like maybe Joan was during the day and then they aired it and then the bookstore was next. That sounds right. People Could saw be. it. You yeah. know what I mean? I can, yeah. Either way, there, it still this, was a lot. <laughs> like really fast. Yeah, yeah. Very fast. This lady that asks the first question, like I think I speak for everyone when I say, right? Behind her, there's a book with Joan... A Joan book club sticker on it. Oh my god, I didn't notice that on a table. Yeah, wow. I I can't see what the book is because the sticker's so fucking big. Oh my god, but yeah, I, <laughs> but there is a book behind her that has the sticker. Oh my god, that is wild. Oh my gosh, yep, all tying it together. I bet it's the optometrist book. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get some use out of the two versions yes. that Leslie has in her office. I do. I, I actually, this was kind of close running for my favorite line. I just love the way that she performed this. The, I think I speak for everyone in the entire world when I say, we need to know where you were born. <laughs> it's just so good. Um, so well delivered. This lady's name is D. Baldis. She's been on Pretty Little Liars, Moving On, a lot of commercials, and a bunch of other things mm-hmm. that I wasn't mega familiar with, but she's done a lot. Also, her head sh- her headshots and pictures are awesome. I always take notice of that when it they're really good headshots on IMDb or their website. So I did reach out to her. Is that her natural hair color? Uh, I mean, that's what all her From the pictures, pictures have. Um, nice. Because wait, that what cool. natural hair color did she have in the show? It's like bright red. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, all her pictures, I mean, maybe she dyes it, but that all her pictures have that, so. Cool. Great job, D. Baldis. Like <laughs> yes, we loved it. Um, okay, I love that Chris says um, who all of you are actually born from Pawnee and ev- or like raised in Pawnee and everyone raises their hand because this really brought me back to, it hits really mm-hmm. close to home for me because everyone in my hometown, including my mom, was born and raised in their hometown. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> No, that's for real because I felt the same way because when I moved to Prescott, it was like I was some alien because I didn't grow up in Prescott or even in Arizona. Yeah. And so that Prescott was really my first glimpse of what a Pawnee kind of is like. Yeah. Because because of because of that, that people were born and raised there. They don't really ever move from there. Like their kids go to the same high school they went to, you know. So yeah. it is funny because Chris, someone who's traveled all over you know, and isn't even from Indiana in the first place, right? Yeah. Like, he's like, oh, 
okay, you're all from here. I, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. So it is wild. You take it seriously, huh? Yeah, because Chris and Ben are the one, like, are the yous of the situation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, where right. they're not from this town. So they're like, it's not that big of a deal, but it is right. to them. Right. Ugh. Unless I love that Leslie still ra- raises her I know. Hand. That was really like, cool. Like, as a, as a F you guys for. Yeah, totally. Like, so. I was, I am. Um, and I love this. Uh, the lady who said, uh, where's your birth certificate? And she has to say, I don't carry it on me. Like that's first yeah. of all, that's very relatable because I feel like people always mm-hmm. like will say anything, uh, you know, where's your birth certificate? Where's your driver's license? Where's this, that and the other? And I'm like, I don't have that. No one cares their birth certificate. But um, she her name is yeah. Lila Waters in real life. And she actually passed away in 2021. Oh, no. I know. What a legacy Aww. she left to the Parks fan, though. Like, yeah. I'm sure. To, and also to her friends and family. Like, rest in peace, Lila. So wonderful. Yeah, you did a great job. I know that was so funny. Um, and just as a little homage to her, I wanted to let everyone know that she taught classes many places. Uh, she taught acting classes. One of them was the Road Theater Company in North Hollywood, and she was in a bunch of shows and television, such as um or TV, or no, sorry, film and television, such as uh, Reform School Girls and Paper Moon. I am not familiar with those shows, but I did look them up, and they do have pretty decent ratings, so I'm sure somebody knows about it. And she was also in Parks, obviously. Side note, I Googled her name, and her autographed headshots are being sold on eBay. So hopefully, if people are buying that, the money is going to like either a good cause or the family, or if she was doing that before she passed away Mm -hmm. i don't know but i was like is this really her because it's like an it's an um an older picture meaning like she was younger um Mm -hmm. and so i'm like okay i just don't know where the money's going to but either way great work lila we're thinking of you and we thank you all right so now um mel cowan the red-faced man comes back Oh, my God. So exciting. For those of you that are new slash can't remember, Mel Cowan was one of our first interviews on the pod as a guest. He was in um, the episode with, well, a bunch of episodes, really. But he was the one that was complaining about, like, he was yelling at girls' uh, soccer team, I think. He was, like, on the sidelines Mm -hmm. yelling at them. (laughs) Um, and he's not a red faced man at all. He's very kind. No. And I follow him on Instagram and he is um, at all of the right. Not all of, but he's been at quite a few of the writer strikes days. So he's a big supporter of that, um, as we all should be. And um, yeah, I did email him and uh, I haven't heard from him or anything, but I think he's still doing his improv team. Um, I want to say it's called something lady, significant lady. Shoot. Mel, I'm sorry if you're listening. You're probably not. But either way, he has the line, uh, go back to where you came from and you might as well be from China. And I think when we were interviewing him, which everyone should really go back and listen to it because it's Mm -hmm. it was a really good interview with like because he did improvise a lot. He said he got to improvise a lot with them. And I don't know if I don't think they kept a lot of it in, but I feel like it was a really interesting history uh, slash not history, but behind the scenes on how you do come in to improvise with these actors that have already you know, have the kind of grease the wheels with their characters and stuff. Um, but I'm pretty positive. He said the China line was uh, improvised. <laughs> so, which is hilarious. Yeah, I think you're right. Cause it was a throwaway. Like you can barely hear him say it, you know, um, which I think also on a deeper level is kind of wild because it's just showing that uh, America, it has, and I feel like always will have like a beef with China. Like <laughs> just, <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they just, we just, it's terrible. Anyhow. Yeah. It's such a per- perfect picture of, like, the bigotry in a small town. You know what I mean? That could happen. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, great yeah. job with Mel. But I anyway. I, lo- I love him. I know me too. Um, Yeah. Andy also, side note, is taking this so seriously. He's like, I'm in the Secret Service. This crowd is very hostile. Let's get you out of here. I have the same note yeah. that i love that he's taking his job so seriously yeah. like first of all he pushes a lady i don't love that he did that then, i will say i yeah, almost I wrote a note she was about not, it and then i was like <laughs> just leave it <laughs> but yeah, now that you she said was, it she was not a threat right totally but that he was <laughs> that he was like i can't let anybody move towards leslie yeah like it's just funny to me totally so totally huh. Um, so they all leave the how the crowd really does get hostile. Um, and now we're at the restaurant uh, with Tom and Ben and Joan, if you are. Yes. And Joan is claiming that Val Kilmer told her that she could be a model. 
that didn't and in case happen. people don't who know <laughs> no, I, I love ben's lines so much that <laughs> that didn't happen um is uh, val kilmer is uh he was in top gun mm-hmm. and batman forever and i've only seen pictures of him recently so when i looked up pictures of him in top gun in like that came out in the 80s right i couldn't say but probably yeah. okay 80s 90s i don't know um but he looked much different than he looks now and i get why 86. okay anyway okay i thought so um i get why she would have been flattered by that comment um he's also in batman forever yeah now um, he looks six- a little rough <laughs> Yeah, That's so sorry. I think he's had some he's he's had some work done okay, for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he's sixty three years old now. But yeah, um, back in the but, day. Um, yeah, yeah. And he has cancer now. Oh no! I'm sorry, Val. So he's, that might be why. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm going to hell. But uh, you know, <laughs> thank you, Val. <laughs> you looked so good in eighty six, bro. And you look fine now. Okay, you're fine. You're perfect just the way you are. And I hope that yes. you beat it. I think you're right, though. Yes. I do see some like like. Uh, like cheek work or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. This industry sucks. It just makes you feel like you need to get all the work done so that you can keep working. Seriously. It's so stupid. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, go ahead. Um. No, I was just going to say the next line, the next line that jumps out to me is um, that Joan compares herself to a caged peacock. Oh my gosh. Yes. Which is kind of a funny parallel because Tom said in like the first or second episode, like he's like peacocking with that like pink hat thing that he has mm-hmm. on. Um. It's really funny to see the flashbacks or callbacks or whatever. But I was going to say right. too that now, so Tom is like being cringy the usual amount, whatever, whatever. Um. And Joan says that she is divorced now so uh, tom shouldn't make any sexual promises that he can't keep which he shouldn't have been doing anyway correct when she was married so i i don't feel bad for him yeah because you shouldn't have been playing with this line anyway right oh my god you know it's not appropriate but yeah totally tom is tom yep um This, I don't know. I might have to do multiple favorite lines for this one, dude, because this next one is so funny. She says she's going to go powder her nose, among other things. Amongst other things. <laughs> and then Ben is like, is she going to powder her vagina? Vagina? <laughs> I also love his line when he's like, no, this seems to be going the usual amount of gross. Yes, totally. Also, that trip slash like fall that she kind of trips over Tom's chair because she's so drunk looks so real, which was that was one of the questions that I was asking uh, her in the last email because I was like, did you really fall or did you were you amazing actor? Because she like which I'm it could be either because she truly Mm -hmm. like bends in half and like goes down almost. Yeah. Anyway, it's she plays this drunk thing so, so So well. well, like all of it. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. How do you say the word C A R A M E L? <laughs> caramel. Okay, I say caramel. <laughs> okay. I think that that, yeah. that might need to be a vote in the Instagrams because I, I yeah I think so too. He called she calls a, Tom yeah. caramel chocolate caramel or just regular caramel no piece of caramel whatever she says yeah she pronounces it caramel and I was like hmm I say caramel. Maybe it's a Midwest thing. I wonder. That's a great question. I know mm-hmm. a lot of friends of mine, though, that say that, too. So that's, that might be a good test. Anyhow, I was just curious. Yeah. It is interesting because it's the same thing with pecan and oh, pecan. Yeah. Uh-huh. Pecan. So, yeah. I can't remember. How do I say that? Pecan. Pecan. I think I say pecan. I, I can never remember. If somebody said it, I can never remember, which is why I'm glad you... You um you spelled caramel. Yeah, that's why I was like, I have to not lead her into it. I I always struggle yeah. with that. Well, anyhow, I was just curious. So now Tom wants Ben to throw some cold water on the situation by saying some nerd stuff, which I love the nerd stuff that he does say. And like nerd culture isn't really like you're out of the zeitgeist. I thought that was a really cool. Yeah, one. which is really true. Totally. If you look at like the the time of us growing up Mm -hmm. like now it's cool to like star wars and lord of the rings and harry potter like whereas i totally get it like back in like when star wars first came out it was like the nerdy thing yeah you know a thousand percent so well back at the office Anne is still trying to win over ron in april and um side note behind Anne, donna has her galentine's day gift that leslie made with the bottle caps or whatever it is of her face that was so cute Love it. Um, I wanted to tell you, there were a couple of deleted scenes with different tactics that Anne tried to use. Um, 
And honestly, like April and uh, Ron were kind of mean in these deleted scenes. Cause, and so I'm kind of glad they cut them because they're even like a little bit off putting in this. Like April was kind of rude. I just felt like and I was like, mm. this is I get it. But also, I don't know. So April pretends to be on the phone in the deleted scene and then literally just tells Anne like stop talking and like interrupts her. And it's, it's just too much. And then Ron just says, get out of my office. And I'm like, I'm sure they weren't going to put all of it in there. Maybe they were alternates or something, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was too much for me. So I'm kind of glad that they just left in what they left in, you know? Yeah. Good. So. Yeah. Cause even the stuff they left in, it, it was very character based. Like yeah. it was definitely on par with who the characters are, but it still was like, you feel bad for Anne. Yeah. You're like hundred percent. Yeah. You're trying to be a nice person. I know. I don't know why it's so important to her to bond with these people, but I think at this point, now where we are, like at the beginning, we were wondering, and now at this point, it's just like she just wants to win. She just wants to check it off her box. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And prove to herself that she can do it. I think there's some part of her, because if I put myself in Anne's shoes, there's some part of her, like, Leslie sees these people to love in in both of these people, right? In Ron and, and... and April and Leslie has special relationships with both of these people. And I don't think it's anything about Anne feeling like threatened by it right, or anything right. like that, but that she wants to be close to the people that, that Leslie's close to. Well, and now Anne works there. So I mean, right. she also wants Makes to sense. make sure that she kind of has somewhat of a relationship, um, which I mean, is totally, you know, to your own preference, whether you want to be friends with your coworkers or not. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think she just yep. at this point wants to be like friendly. She doesn't want to be BFF. She just wants to like be able to say, hey, like, what's one thing about you that I don't know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. also side note, if you'll remember, Ron had a stick at the beginning that he was carving and now it is a full fledged recorder. Yes. Props department. Because he works that Great fast. For you. I know. Seriously. Yeah. A part of me was like, did um, Nick Offerman have this at some point? Did he actually do it? Because he could have done it probably. In real life. I don't know. He could have. Yeah. He's got the skill, man. He's got the skill. He's got it. Well, anyhow, props department. If it was you, great job. But Leslie is meeting with her campaign managers and the birth certificate that she shows them just has Wamapok County on it. But she needs to get the long form certificate. And side note, I did. um, Well, I'll tell you that when we get to Eagleton because I looked up some stuff about birth certificates. But she needs a long form certificate. Side note, Johnny Sneed. Uh, who we also interviewed is in this episode. So go back and listen to his episode as well because it's so good and he's amazing. Um, also, I was going to tell you, so this kind of goes back to what I was uh, mentioning before. There is a deleted scene with Johnny talking about who they think might have spread the rumor. But I would have liked to know that. It just says basically there. He just said it's probably just somebody trying to like uh, also run a campaign or something. And I'm like, I don't care. I want to know who it is. Anyways, but I did like that in the deleted scene that they kind of even at least mentioned it. I don't know. Yeah. You know what it could be? Hmm. Is that her mom was having a conversation with someone and accidentally <gasps> let it slip. Maybe. Like it wasn't it wasn't malicious. It was just, well, I you know, the, it was during that time when the raccoons right. were, you know, so I had to take so and somebody else could have overheard it or been part of that yeah. conversation and used it totally also um when you said raccoons it just made me reminded me um the front page of this book has raccoons on the side <laughs> of course it does and there's like literally nothing else it's her the sign of pawnee and raccoons <laughs> and raccoons that's on par with with uh what what the show's there's about, a whole so section about the raccoons so i'll keep you guys posted but um Eagleton, I was going to say, Eagleton, like this, so they go to the Eagleton office, birth certificate office, or records office, whatever the hell, and it kind of reminds me of The Good Place, which I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but I wonder if there's any correlation there, like if, I don't know, they were thinking about The Good Place while they were doing this, you know? Mm-hmm. Very well could could have been. But Has had The Good Place started coming out yet? No, I don't think so. I think it was like still in, like, the mind of Mike Sure, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it, it had come out. But anyway, um, it all connects at some point, to be honest. Yes. So at the Eagleton office, there is a lady, Alexis Pratchett, who works there. And I was with Leslie. I was like, okay, take it down a notch, Alexis. Amen. 
I was all about that. Because she definitely has the same air as Lindsay Carlisle Shay, the one that Leslie left the job for in Pawnee. I thought that they all, Mm -hmm. they did a great job that Eagleton's all have this like snobby, wealthy, walking on like water and pearls voice. Like, I Mm -hmm. don't know, you know, diamonds are floating around. Better than you. Yeah. Yeah. Void of like emotion. Yeah, totally. Yes. I did. Oh, go ahead. You go first. Oh, I was just going to say that Chris comes up to try to help. Oh my gosh. And. Because in Pawnee, he's beautiful and he can get away with that. And I think it was just like flooring for him to be like, oh, my gosh, here, I'm just a normal person. Yes, totally. Oh, my God. I loved that so much. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I did reach out to Alexis or well, Alexis Pratchett is the character name. Her name is Elizabeth Sandy in real life. She is amazing. And she sent me a voice memo. <gasps> Yay. She was so Thank great. You. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, my gosh. We love um, she's an actor and a dancer, or at least she was. I meant to ask her about that. You can tell me later, um, Elizabeth, and or I'll ask you via email but um she has also been in modern family me myself and i she's been involved in a couple short films commercials um it looks like she has some behind the ca- uh behind the camera experience as well looks like she was a boom operator cool. and some horror mystery movies which is cool as well um and then she was born in melbourne so she's actually an australian actress and wow. she has an australian actress or actress she has an australian accent, accent <laughs> and it is beautiful and i will play it for you but i did want to make it clear that she said that she was like really nervous um um, at first and she ended up having an awesome time obviously and she just could not say nicer things about it um, oh, but nice. just as a heads up this one um, hers is about 11 um, ish minutes long so but I think that I cut it in a way where all the information is really juicy and cute and whatever so I'm just gonna play it for you right now and thank you Elizabeth hey Holly and Maddie it's Elizabeth Sandy here uh, thanks so much for having me on your Parks and Rec podcast Um, How did I get my job on Parks and Recreation, which was a a little while ago now, I played Alexis Pratchett. Um, So it's a funny story, really, because I'm actually Australian, if you can't tell by my accent. And I had been in the USA for quite some time, but I was on a, a specific visa that I later found out wasn't accepted by certain networks. Uh, which was quite devastating. Uh, So all I could really do was independent film and commercials and things like that. But uh, Parks and Rec, which was uh, a network show, was my first job after I got my green card. So it was quite significant in that it was my first day on a a big uh, Hollywood set, I guess you could say. Uh, so needless to say, I was I was pretty nervous. Uh, I remember the audition. They were very, very kind. Uh, I, I got the audition kind of a day before I was meant to go in there. And it was quite a lot of words, really, for, you know, the day before or even the night before. I think it was like 8 p.m. and I had to be there at like 11 a.m. or something like that. So I do remember very much running my lines all night. (laughs) I was in the shower running them. And when I got there, I don't know, something about the character just kind of clicked. You know, maybe maybe because I'm a little bit uh, type A myself, (laughs) that the character of Alexis kind of uh, plugged in in some way. I was submitted by my agent I auditioned and thankfully I was pinned and then got the job and I could actually do it because I had all of my um, immigration stuff. I was really familiar with the show, I loved it. I'm a huge Amy Poehler, huge Tina Fey fan, Uh, even though Tina Fey is not in the show, I know they're very much a team. So uh, I was thrilled for that to be one of my first big American TV jobs really thrilled. Uh, Nervous, of course, but however, on the day at on set, um, I don't think I was quite ready for the whole kind of network TV experience. You know, at that point, I'd worked a lot in Australia. I'd worked on independent films in America and commercials and things like that. But I hadn't really experienced, you know, going to set and having all the writers, all the producers, all the, you know, the director, all the actors lined up and surrounding me uh, as we ran the scene. 
And that's what happened. So I did feel somewhat intimidated. It wasn't like, you know, I was their, their main focus, but it kind of felt that way because uh, I'd never experienced having all those people watching the rehearsal process, watching the uh, walkthrough and, um, and, and just kind of, you know, they, they were talking really about the logistics of it. But as an actor, um, as I'm sure you understand, you very much kind of tune in to, to the stress of a set or the stress of, of people wanting things to, to work out and uh, invariably kind of make it uh, about uh, maybe I'm not doing a good job or maybe I've, I've messed up somehow. So um, nervous certainly was where I was at even, even after having worked in the industry for, oh gosh, I mean, I, I started working in the Australian industry when I was 13, 14. So I was pretty seasoned at this point, but I'd never experienced anything like being on a big set like that. But it was amazing, amazing experience. And the actors, I mean, talk about professionals. I mean, there's a reason why they're all so successful. Uh, their work ethic was amazing, uh, really down to earth. All of them were so kind to uh, you know I felt like it was my first day at school a little bit and they were so welcoming and Amy Poehler was so kind she came up to me and said oh do you want to Elizabeth do you want to run lines let's run lines um just like we were you know equal (laughs) I suppose um in the hierarchy of a network tv show so that was uh really really nice Uh, I I was just soaking it in, you know, it, it couldn't have really been a better experience because the actors were so kind, the writers were so kind. One of the writers came up to me, uh, she said, oh, like, I'm so, so thrilled with how you, you played the character and thank you so much. And meanwhile, you know, me being the actor thinking, oh, God, I messed up a line, I've, I've, I've ruined it. The writer herself came up to me and thanked me. That was really, really rewarding. I think in terms of of the characterization of Alexis, I think that it was very well written in that it was very clear that she was a type A personality and she was kind of a snob and she was a bit of a nemesis uh, to Amy's character, to Leslie. Um, but I do feel like I was able to have so much fun with it. Um, I kind of thought of her as kind of uh, maybe she'd been a, a, um, a beauty pageant contestant when she was younger and she had very much had that poise and that, that kind of I will kill you with kindness vibe. And that was very much how I approached the role. So um, you asked the direction where I kind of uh, tr- try to um, shut down uh, Chris uh, when he's mirroring me and, 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 and trying to kind of almost seduce me into getting what he wants. Uh, I very much decided that I wanted to keep that kind of very kind, very beauty pageant-esque uh, quality about myself, about Alexis, um, even when I'm telling someone no. So I did definitely make a conscious choice to say, I'm sorry, no. Uh, in a super kind way uh, and very much in a way that was shutting him down. Um, it's almost like I had this, uh, this glass wall um, that was uh, uh, shielding me from his charms, which were very much um, something that he relied upon. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting choice and I think that that ultimately helped me. The way the character was written was so clear and so well written that um, it was easy to get an idea of what the character was supposed to be. When I got the audition, I thought, well, anyone can read this and, and, and interpret it in a way that is probably, you know, right for the role. So... As an actor, I often think, okay, so what what can I do to kind of give it a little twist? I try to think, okay, so in this position, how would she walk? How would she talk? How would she hold herself? And how would she say no? And uh, I came to the the 
a realisation that she probably would say no with a smile. The location of the Eagleton office was at the studio. It was at CBS. So, yeah, it was a set. <laughs> uh, great set. Uh, but I do remember after I'd exited my, you know, little spiel, the scene continued on. So I had to kind of hide behind a uh, kind of a flat until they'd finished. Um, so... You know, it's not like I made this exit and, and went off about my business. I was I was trying to make myself small and trying to make myself hidden so that I wasn't found on camera while the scene was progressing. But an amazing set and very convincing. Uh, so definitely felt like I was an Eagleton through and through. I, you know, I, I, I just look back on the whole experience as a really fond memory. Yes, I was very, very nervous. And yes... I felt a bit like I didn't do the best job that I could have, but that's just, I think, an actor. You can always think, oh, you know, I could have done this or I could have tweaked that. But at the end of the day, I really, you know, I think that that, that my role as a, as a day player, as a guest role, uh, served the story and, and worked to serve the main character's journey. Co-stars, guest stars are very important in that they help the story kind of progress. And without them, it, it really can't because they kind of fuel the lead character's journey and fuel their storylines. So when I look back on it, you know, despite having all of my actor hang-ups and all of my ego, the character of Alexis really kind of fulfilled the purpose that that she was meant to. And the fact that her hair was perfect, yes, the hair, I, I really liked that hairstyle. It was very, um, not a hair out of place, I guess I would say, about that hair, hairstyle. Uh, and, and the outfit too, I mean, very prim, very put together. But that was very appropriate for the character. And I think that hair and wardrobe and makeup really play a part in carving out the way an actor feels about their character. I have nothing, 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 nothing bad to say about my experience um, on Parks and Rec. I'm really thankful for it. And especially because it was my first network Hollywood show. And now I'm back in Australia and I'm working here. So right now I'm auditioning out here in Australia again. I'm still auditioning for the US uh, based shows, but I'm uh, primarily based in Australia and I am just living life and being a, a gigging actor, uh, hoping for more experiences like that first one. But I really appreciate you hearing out my story. Um, if you have any other more questions, any other questions at all, I'd be happy to answer. But um, as I mentioned, there is nothing bad to say about any of the Parks and Rec cast. And uh, it, was, it was a dream working with Amy and Rob and uh, Chris. I, I mean, they're superstars and, and comedic whizzes. And I really love comedy. Uh, it's really something that I have explored a lot and I hope to explore more. So to, to, to be able to work with such comedic talent was a, a complete honour. But thank you so much for being a fan of the show and uh, I wish you all the best for the rest of your podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I will talk to you. At some point, I look forward to hearing more about what you guys talk about the show. Thanks so much. Yay! How wonderful. I know. She had a lot of great things to say. Yeah, so much. Yeah, but that Absolutely. was so amazing. Um, That was great. And I'm so happy that she sent me things. I was taking notes also as uh, it was happening, even though I had kind of listened to it because I had edited it. But I wanted to let people know that pinned, she mentioned that she was pinned. That means that she, um, what, and we've talked about this before, but basically um, it started because you were on a cork board. Your picture is on a cork board and you are pinned on the cork board because they're hoping to hire you maybe but they want to make sure before they make their decision so they're based it's kind of i don't know it's a hit or miss because
because it's a great thing, but it's also like you can't do literally anything else um, while they're making the decision. Like you're basically on hold. So, <laughs> right. um, but that's awesome that she got it. And then the rehearsal process on camera, that was really interesting to hear um, about like having all the crew and camera people watching you and everything. And um, I thought that was really cool. And Amy running lines. That's so cool because even I like... I know don't always do that you know what I mean and so I think that is really wonderful that someone that's running the show basically is like just welcoming you and being like hey want to run these lines and like just get comfortable with what we're doing um I thought that that's so professional um but yeah I did ask about her hairstyle because did you notice her hairstyle yeah it was so cool so I was like will you please just tell me about that and like what you felt about it (laughs) Um, and then Chris Traeger, obviously. And yeah, I'm glad that she told us about the hiding behind the like little desk thing there or something, because Mm -hmm. when Andy goes to get the birth certificate, like illegally, quote unquote, whatever, I'm like, where did she go? Did she just leave? Like, she's not there anymore. But I also just. It's interesting that like the receptionist wouldn't stay out there, too. I know. I guess they had to do that so that Andy could break in. But still, I was like. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that she told us about that because that's something that I definitely wouldn't have known or thought to really even ask. Um, so I'm happy that yeah. she told us that. And I just love the, um, you know, how honest and, you know, vulnerable she was about how nervous and like the imposter stone drill of like, I mess everything up. But it was great. It was phenomenal. Like, mm-hmm. so good. She did so, yeah, well, so well. And then. also the voice that she put on was so good. Like, you would never know that she was just putting on an English accent. But she clearly was a professional and did her research and work and stuff. And I just thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree completely. Thank you for the voice memo. Yes. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And yeah, we'll let you know if we have any other questions or if anyone else does. But um, yeah, best of luck on all your auditions. I hope that you book all the things and you get to work with all the actors. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Did you notice that there's cucumber water in the back? Like it's a spa, basically? No, but of course there would be. Yeah, totally. I thought it was so funny. Yeah, that's great. Great back background thing. Yeah. And then there when she when Andy comes out too, they're just like chilling, eating like pastries uh amy yeah. fuller and uh rob Lowe. It's, i thought that was really yes. funny it is which like again is follow through from the jail yeah when she gets scones in the morning totally that's true yeah um so i was gonna tell you about the birth certificate thing really fast but maybe you have something before that what were you gonna say i was just gonna say i'm sure most people have seen the blooper from oh the scene. yeah totally when Andy throws the briefcase and it hits the light switch. I always thought that was so funny, but I didn't know he shut down the power when he did that. Yeah. I've heard that like too. he fucked up but, the power. Um, but did it say like of how they got it back on or anything or if they had to come back the no. next day? No, That's I didn't say crazy. anything about that. But it's funny. Because yeah. it was, a, so that means it was a real light switch. It wasn't a prop. Right. Well, because you'll, you'll even see it in... um. And maybe it was a prop, but that they had just had electricity there because in the blooper, when he tosses it and it hits the light switch, the lights go off. <gasps> yeah, you're right. So, wild. yeah. And then and then this one where he goes back and he falls over the... And the that's computer falls? Also, Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, the computer falls. Yeah. yeah, the computer falls. That's also like was completely real reactions from Amy Poehler and... and uh, Roblo. Yeah, because I read or I, I wrote down like, was that real? The computer falling? I'm sure that wasn't scripted because mm-hmm. that no, looked like a real ass iMac. Yeah, that just yeah. fucking fell. He just destroyed the entire fucking. I know, that right? Day. Oh, my God. Just Prats. Uh, that's insane. He's so funny, though. Oh, my God. Well, I the hope that it didn't cost too it. much. I mean, they have the money, but still. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I also love before you get to that yeah. when he comes back and he goes real quick, spell your last name. For me. <laughs> yeah, he like doesn't know his boss's last name. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really glad he does because knowing Andy, he'd go back there and look for the ends. Totally. Well, my thing was totally. My thing also was like, why didn't Alexis Pratchett ask to like fill out a form or something? She straight up was just like, no, nope, you have to three wait to eight weeks and buy. And then she just leaves. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And I think it's, I mean, if I were to solid, uh, like justify it, I guess I would say like, well, they stepped aside and were like, dang it, I can't do that. So what do I like? So she was like, okay, mm-hmm. they can figure it out for a moment and I'm just going to leave them to figure it out. Like what they want to do. Um, but 
Yeah, I was like, there has to be a way to at least get the process started. But also, why does it take six to eight weeks if it's literally in the back? <laughs> Correct. Which was my question. And I looked that up. So if you, you don't have that, then I'll share. But okay. I know you have the stuff on the birth certificate. The only thing that I have, honestly, is that it typically takes four to eight weeks to receive your certified birth certificate copy in the mail. Um, and if you need your replacement sooner, there's premium services. That's um, There's something called vitalrecordsonline.com. And they offer mm-hmm. a rush package with expedited shipping. To me, that seems a little sketchy because I would rather it come directly from the birth certificate department of whatever the hell. I forgot. Um, but, okay. And then some states, it says, apparently it depends on the state uh, in some places. Because mm-hmm. some states may even be able to provide a copy within two to three business days. And... I was like, what the F? So that's what I found. But yeah, I would love to hear what you found too. Yeah, it's interesting because it's one to five days in Tennessee is what I found. Oh, okay. And one to two weeks in Arizona. Mm. So it, it is state by state. Which is weird. So I should have looked up Indiana. Dumb. Oh, then that's okay. Hold on. I mean, basically the long story, is, long story short is that it takes a couple weeks or at least a week to get it and then they have to ship it to you. But also again, why is it in the back and it still takes six to eight weeks? Right. And I wonder, is it like a verifying process to make sure yeah. you're giving the birth certificate to the right person? Like, cause that Staffing could get really dangerous. Probably too. Cause how, who knows how oh, many yeah, requests for, sure. for them they are. Um, right. But again, you would think that if you were to go in person, like Leslie did, and it's literally in the back that they'd be fine with it, but that's stupid. So yeah. Anyhow. So long form in Indiana, it says anywhere from two to two to eight weeks. Okay. So this that's, that checks out for what they said. Yeah. But Alexis, okay. you could have gone back there. I know. <laughs> but again, as she played it so well of the whole like snobby moment of like, no, sorry. I just, I, I and I did <laughs> specifically ask her about Chris Traeger, how that was to act with Rob Lowe. And you know, that's why she brought up that moment and how she would respond back to that. And then back, I always ask like, did you guys have a backstory with this? Or like, did you come up with any sort of like anchor to root you to your character. Um, and that's what she was saying too about, I love the beauty pageant thing. I think that would totally yeah. be real. Great. Yeah. Okay. So now back at the restaurant, Joan is wildly drunkenly singing to the whole restaurant. Let's hear it for the boys, which From by the Footloose. way is in Footloose. Yes. Jinx. Um, <laughs> and so good. And then also Ben starts ta- talking about Star Trek and, um, I thought that was hilarious. So, so I, I totally respect it. I didn't understand anything he was saying because I'm not a Trekkie, but it's fine. Yeah, me either. I just love yep. that he's so into it, though. He's like, let's just say the message boards are going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's great because this is supposed to slow things down. And Joan's now like, well, I want you yes, to. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. And there is a deleted scene where Joan says, like, I this is where I think that some, this deleted scene must have been improvised because you can kind of see or you can kind of see Adam Scott breaking a tiny bit, but I think Mo Collins improvised quite a bit. Um, she says that she has a Captain Kirk outfit for Ben to wear when they get home. <laughs> oh. It's so <gasps> funny, and I, oh, I love it. I just don't think that that was in there. Um, I I, think- yeah, high levels of doubt. That's amazing. I have to say, this is a redeemable moment for Tom for me. Yeah, that's fair. That's because really true. He, they could have just let her figure it the the fuck out, you know. Yeah. And he was like, "Listen, she's she's way past. We need to at least get her home." Right. And so I was like, "You know what, Tom? Like, you're not always a sleaze ball. Like, that's I. If I was Joan, I would I wouldn't expect it of Tom. Yeah. But I would be really appreciative, especially as a as a big figure in the town, like that you weren't just left there to continue to make a fool of yeah. yourself." Oh, my so, God. Yeah, that's true. That yeah. is true. Especially because Ben's like, well, like, you want to go, like, sleep with her still kind of thing? Like, what? Yeah. Um, but then Tom is, like, explaining that we have to no, get her yeah. home. Um, Tom uh, really loves these paintings at Joan's house. And I just think they are so freaking hilarious. It's, like, filled with cheetah print. And then the naked wall paintings <laughs> really reminded me of that uh, one. What's his name? Nick Newport. Yes, Nick Newport. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The one in the wheelchair. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, they had to have been done by the same people because they look like the same style. And I wonder if it's the same person that did um, all of the. Because remember, I I said that the the person who did the uh, the Leslie Goddess picture that she makes a double mm-hmm. up also did the pictures for City Hall. 
So I wonder if City Hall guy and Leslie Goddess picture guy are the same as the naked pictures. <laughs> yeah, that would be hilarious. Oh, my God. And yeah, I also love the one of her like on the, the chase lounge. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, with her robe falling off her shoulder. Like, that's actually a very fierce photo. Yeah, I love it. I love it, too. So, um, yeah. I also think that really is her that they're throwing on the bed. Like, I don't think that that was a stunt double. So they really must have rehearsed oh, yeah. for that. Yeah. But Oh, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Um, also, why why is Tom getting in the bed to oh fill the God. sheets? It's like, you know what, how risky that is, dude. Oh, my God. Um, there is a deleted scene here, which doesn't really, like, add anything, but I just thought it was really funny. Um, so I'm just going to play it really fast. Tom, come on. Whoa! The whole entire set of eyes and all skin cream? This one isn't even available in American stores. Tom. Tom. Man, you have to come here and peel how soft my hands are. Tom! Should we put her in her pajamas? No. But that's what they do in the movies. What? Look at all these pieces. Good Lord. I got that same guy doing some portraits of me next week. What do you think about this for a pose? It's option one. Option two. Go back to the first one. That one's better. Look one. Look the first two. one. Well, yeah, that one. What about the eyes? Looking straight ahead or kind of away? Look at me again. I like you looking at me. Looking at you has a lot of value just because... Wait a second. What the... We gotta go. <laughs> That's so funny. So Tom is getting portraits done by the same person guy girl whoever that joan has these up and so they're going over poses and i just think that was really funny yeah oh my gosh i love it God. okay so all right we have covered all of the bloopers of chris now leslie's going to marlene if you are there yes and i want to know why marlene didn't warn leslie yeah same here yeah. I wrote that. I was if, like, I feel like Leslie's mom should have at least told her when Leslie was on the campaign moment. Like, I get not saying it mm-hmm. when you're young because she didn't have to. But like, did her mom not see yeah. the book? Like, I would assume that her mom would see the book or that, that she, she was knew going what on the show or like yeah. something. But yeah. Yeah. Or even when the campaign started, right, is like, hey, there's something I've told you that I haven't told you, but it could come out during the campaign. Yeah. Like she's a politician. Like she should yeah. she should know that that's something that could come up later. Right. So just what we're talking about is that Leslie goes to Marlene and confirms that she was not born in Pawnee because Pawnee's hospital was overrun with raccoons. <laughs> and I love the um the no, which by the way, we didn't even say this, but obviously if you watch the show, you know. But basically they got after Andy got the birth certificate, it says that she was born in Eagleton. So she is like, mm-hmm. I'm an Eagletonian. Which, by the way, we'll talk about this when we get there, but just because you were born somewhere, which I know that they say, but what, as soon as she said, I'm an Eagle Tony, and I was like, no, you're not. An Eagle Tony mm-hmm. means you live in Eagle to- Eagleton and all the things. You're not an Eagle Tonian. Anyways, yeah. um, I was just mentioning the when she goes, no, no. I do that frequently, like especially with my family, like if my mom and my sister, because I just feel really comfortable with them. And I'm, I, it, yeah. it's like a with this show so frequently, Maddie. It's always I'm always like a chicken egg situation. Like, did I do it because Leslie did it, or did I already do that? And I just right. love that I can relate to Leslie in that way. <laughs> and I, th- I think it's different for me with The Office because The Office, you quote, I quote things, and I, I know it's from The Office. Like even if yeah. they're just like little little one-liners like a creed one that we use all the time is that's not why yeah and no one can ever pick where we got that from right but for me with parks and rec it sounds Mm. and the inflections of how things are said like you're saying totally right yeah so it's like it's different like i don't quote lines as much from parks and rec it's more the way leslie like emulates things right right yeah so totally um okay well so now i'm at where ann is coming back in for ron and april if you are Yes, and I absolutely love her outfit. Me too. We are in the season of me loving Anne's outfits. Yes. She has a bloody hospital story in this wonderful outfit. And I'm happy that Anne got what she wished for. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think- me too. I would love to know if this story is real because it could be. It really could be. It could be. Because she know? had all the answers. So maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, it must be true in the canon of this of the show, potentially. But a part of me was like, maybe she's making this up just so that she can get with them. Right, but so I she feel has a story. Like, right. But I feel like since she was a nurse for so long, she probably did see something similar to this. So 
Right. And it didn't necessarily like need to have happened the last night. Right. Like, is it exactly. something she's been through? But yeah, know? I would love to know if it's real, like so. outside of the show. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. something happened like that. Come on. People are crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the toe. Me too. <laughs> I know. Great storytelling. Um, I love this classic editing in the next scene, though. Uh, classic Dean Holland, I think, but I would assume where they have the close up and then zoom out to see another person sitting there like they do in the office. Mm -hmm. Um, and the whole Anne was getting a little chummy, so he calls people by their wrong name to just let them know they're not getting too close. (laughs) Yes. I love I love that. um, And uh, and April does it to him. Yes, and then I love Ron's reaction. Ron has a little cute little smirk smile thing of like Yes, and this is where I noticed I'm sorry, I hit my mic. This is where I noticed Ron's mustache is still missing a little bit here in the center. Which they're calling back from yeah. when he shaved, no, when he shaved for the Ron, Ron and the Tammies episode. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh my god, the fire he was, was a million years ago. Yes, when he shaved. Yeah. Yes. yes. Ron so I thought Tammies. that was a really nice like touch. It's not a lot of it, right? It, this is the first time I noticed it in the whole episode, but I looked it up. Yeah. It's like, why is he? And it, it's just like right here in the center. Interesting. Great. Yeah. Great detail. Continuity. All right. Love it. I also love, again, all these lines, man. I don't know what to decide. Um, I love this line of wonder how, who else was born in Eagleton. Voldemort, probably. <laughs> I, yeah. So good. Just so It is so good. Um, and then Tom comes in and breaks the news that we already knew because it's, you know, too late. Um, and then Chris has that really great moment where it's like what we were to, uh, about to get to mm-hmm. where he says where you're from is a piece of trivia, but um, or where you're born is a piece of trivia. But where you're from is what really matters. And I was totally mm-hmm. with Ron. I was like kind of reluctant to agree with Chris for some reason. I don't know why. But I was like, yeah, he's right. That's well said. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I, I, I like relate with that, right? I, the place I was born, I lived there for six weeks Yeah, and I, and I've been back to visit right. like my grandpa and stuff like that. But like, I didn't, there's not a lot of part of me that's Portland, Oregon. Right, 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 right. You know, like I grew up in all these other places that made me who I am. So I, I like related that so hard. Yeah. Like you're so, and I could totally hear how cool. it would be difficult to understand like who you are and what shaped you if you were born in like a bunch of or not born raised in a bunch of different places like growing up, mm. um, which I think is a struggle for a lot of people. But yeah, it totally makes sense. Like wherever you're born does not necessarily mean that that's like who you are. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. And I, but I also understand the flip side of people not understanding that coming from a place where you've never lived anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's. It, but I do think I get knowing it. where you're born is like a huge part of your identity. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would agree with that. So I think that's really interesting mm-hmm. to kind of dig into Leslie that psychologically. Feels, yeah. Because she's like her whole life is sadness. a freaking lie, you know, yeah. in, in, in yeah. a sense. Um, but now obviously she has to reframe and she does a great job right. of that with the help of her coworkers. So I think that's really, really, um, you know, profound. And then we have Joan coming in hungover because of, quote, some bad seafood that I had. <laughs> yes. The way she sits down in the chair oh my God. with her knees touching. Yes. Oh, brilliant. That's amazing. Well and like kind of slunch or slunched. <laughs> Did I just uh, make up a word? Over. <laughs> yeah, um, I like it. Slouched over, hunched over. I combined two of those words. Um, this reminded me of when Ron takes on the calls. And isn't she drunk then, too? <laughs> Yeah, that? yeah, she is, and I can't remember why. I know, I know. I hit my. But she's too. sitting in like fifteen different. Yes, you know, she's like laying on the couch. Yeah, feet up in the air. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, that was during um the campaign. I feel like more so of the campaign. But anyhow, we'll get there when we get yeah. there. Um, I love this. Um, where she says again, it's not where you're born; it's where you're from. And then she explains a bunch of her memories, like sledding down Nipple Hill. It gets slippery, especially when it's wet. <laughs> Slippery nipple That's is a drink, said. by the way. Is it really? Yes. Um, I'm going to Google it because I forgot to um, do it for my research. Um, yes, it's a shot. It's a, a layered cocktail shooter with equal parts butterscotch schnapps and Irish cream. <laughs> oh, that actually sounds delicious. I know. It's not bad, huh? So. No. Anyhow. I can't um, drink. I know. Oh, my God. You can't drink anymore. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Shit. Yeah. There's a lot of things you don't think about until you can't have them, like coffee. (laughs) 
Well, you can have one thing, I think. One cup, they say, is okay. But it depends on your yeah, body, said, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's been fun. Well, anyway, I have that been makes getting me sad. Into, I, and it's not the same. I will not make any sort of um, ex, or like excuse to say that it's the same, but I have been trying like to drink less, meaning that I'll, I've been experimenting with a lot of like seltzers and like really mm-hmm. interestingly mm-hmm. flavored seltzers. Like I'll find them at Trader Joe's or I love Celsius now. Wait, have you heard of mm. those? No, um, I don't know. They do have caffeine in them, so I don't know how safe they would be for you. But they're basically like a pre-workout drink, kind of like they have energy drinks um, or energy in it. Caffeine meaning is how they like market it. But you don't have to have it before a workout. Um, I think that they just market it as like something that you could. But it's meant to be like a more antioxidant version of coffee, you know, so that you don't crash. And oh, it's okay. not nasty, like for your body to just like go down the drain also right. tastes really good so i don't know gotta love that there's also a watermelon seltzer at trader joe's if that is of interest to you i'm sure they have multiples i do like walmart and kroger so mm-hmm. okay so what we're talking about the slippery nipple um and <laughs> she remembers jim from the cameraman operating and tells this embarrassing mm-hmm. story of when he peed his pants in second grade and i just way think too it's much information so funny um kenny stevenson is the one that plays this and he also sent us a voice message <gasps> yeah um he is an improviser actor writer and producer he's been in a bunch of ucb shorts brooklyn 99 comedy bang bang which is also a podcast by the way but i think he was in the show um but you can correct me if I'm wrong, Kenny, uh, and a bunch of other UCB things. But um, I just am really grateful that he sent it. Sent, and he yeah. has some really cool uh, things to say. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for us now. Um, and this one, I think, is 10 minutes long. So and by the way, you guys, I'm telling you how long they are not to like be like, oh, my God, they sent me a voice memo that was so long. But if you need to skip ahead or pause for a moment before you dig into this voice memo, Go ahead because they're all very juicy and you need to be paying attention. So, okay, here's Kenny's. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. It's wild. Um, these are my answers to your questions. Apologies, there might be some construction happening near me. So, question one How did I get my job on the show? Tell us about your audition, the process, if it wasn't an audition, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, I auditioned. Uh, to for Dorian Frankel, one of the few casting directors' names I remember in this town because my wife's name is Dorian. Uh, that's not my wife, but that's who the casting director was. And um, I, at the time, uh, I was on a house team, a house sketch team, a mod team at the UCB Theater in LA called uh, Oh Brother. And a writer on my sketch team was a writer's assistant at Parks and Rec, and his name is David Phillips. He then went on to uh, write for Brooklyn Nine-Nine and uh, whatever he's working on now, it's fine. Uh, he didn't get, I got my agent got me the audition. He had been talking about wanting to get us all on the show forever, but he's a writer's assistant. It's kind of hard to do that. Um, got my audition. He said he, I told him I was auditioning. He said he would do whatever he could to try to like push me in the room. But when they were looking at tapes, he wasn't there so i actually like there was no help i might have like greased the wheel a little saying my friend was auditioning but i you know i got the part and that's how it happens um i what it was uh, do you did you know anyone before you got to set so i had done a show at the ucb with amy poehler before it was a show that matt besser used to do called besser's back room and he used to have like a guest who played themselves and he used to have a bunch of people do characters around them. And so I did the show with her. I met her. We didn't talk very much. And I was doing, I was doing a Russell brand impression, which ended up being not one of my better impressions. So I doubt she remembered me going into it. Uh, do you remember if there were any improvised moments? Sorry. Sip a tea, keep it all in. Do you remember if there were any improvised moments between you and Amy? No, not really. Um, Because the way the scene was shot, where it was, you know, we're in the studio, and so we do, like, it's, like, double the the behind-the-scenes and the show. Because there's, like, an actual show being taped, the Pawnee Today, they shot all that with just Mo and uh, Amy... And then I was off camera to deliver my lines to her. 
Um, so there, we kind of stayed, I mean, she maybe might have like put some buttons or so at the end a couple of times, but <clears throat> we stayed pretty close to it. Uh, were the lines you had scripted? No, those were basically the lines. It, they didn't really change. I think they maybe might have like, Peter Pan. No, they, I feel like it was all the one thing they did add that didn't happen in the, um, so when, so we shot the, uh, we shot all the stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I took a sip mid sentence. That probably sounds terrible for your listeners. Um, we did. So we shot all the stuff with Amy and Mo, like focused on them first and me off camera delivering my lines so they could do the whole scene that way. And then they brought everybody else in and then turned the cameras, like pointed the cameras at everybody. So like Aziz and Rob Lowe and Adam Scott and Chris Pratt. So when we started doing the scene with all of us, that like cutaway they do to Chris Pratt when uh, it's so wild to say that I was in a scene with all these people. <laughs> Chris Pratt. I always forget that I did this. I watched Guardians like three times already. Um, Guardians Volume 3. Um, when he heard the line about how I peed my pants, Pratt did this whole thing where he, the point where he points and started laughing, that was improvised. And so they added the kind of camera whipping over to him to get that reaction. So that was something that changed on the day. Let's see. Any memories from being on set? Literally anything. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of memories being on set. It was like, you know, I loved the show and always thought it was a great show and had watched it and watched it with like, not just like, I think it's like, I just, you know, I was doing a lot of comedy at the UCB and these people, most of the, you know, Aziz came through the UCB, Amy came through the UCB. These were all people that like in part of my mind, I'm like, well, it's only five years wait till I'm doing this, which was <laughs> false. But um, it, the thing that stuck out to me the most is how well cast the show was. Like everybody on the show was very kind of like similar to who they are. I mean, they're not the same person, but like Amy is very nice, um, very funny. Aziz is very much as he's on sorry very much his character he is like bouncing off the walls little high energy the second they call cut he's got his phone out and is like texting people and tweeting and then the second they're like roll action his phone's away and he's right in it and chris pratt was just this i mean this is the time this is before guardians volume one so he was still kind of uh doughy as they say and um he was just this big teddy bear running around singing like in between takes he was singing um shania twain man it feels like a woman and he's just like singing it and like talking to the crew about their softball games and like oh can i play softball with you guys like he was this like oh cool he was very much like his, everyone was very much and adam scott is just unbelievably nice like came over and introduced himself um, Rob Lowe is like what you think Rob Lowe would be. He was this, I've been acting for 25 years. There's a look on his face. So we're doing, you know, the thing that was, <laughs> this is my biggest, one of the biggest memories from the set as well. So, you know, we're shooting what's supposed to be a, it's like we're shooting a television show, Parks and Rec. And then on Parks and Rec, we're shooting a television show called Pawnee Today. And my character is the producer of Pawnee Today. So I'm dressed like a crew person. I have like a headset and everything. And so, you know, you do, before you bring camera in, you do first team rehearsal. So I'm considered part of the first team. So they're like only first team only on set and the director. So the first, you know, Amy and Mo are up on the stage, you know, Aziz, Chris, myself, Adam Scott, Rob Lowe are all sitting, you know, behind the camera and the scene goes and then it gets to the point where part where I'm, you know, Amy points at me and we, at this point Amy, Mo and I had done the scene for like a couple of hours and so when everybody else was brought in, so they she we were very comfortable and so then Amy did her line to me and then I delivered my line back and the look on Rob Lowe's face was like, what? Why is this crew person talking? Like, who let this grip just start talking lines? Like, what's going on? And I could see Adam had to kind of cue him in, and then he was fine. Um, 
Let's see. I've always, I think that's good. I don't have any stories about from Crafty. I, I don't remember Crafty. I don't. I'm sure it was great. Maybe it's at CBS Radford. So CBS Radford is like designed for shooting television shows. And so there's like every soundstage has like an office attached to it. So you don't get like a trailer if you're doing a day on it. You get like an actual like room. You get an actual like an office almost. It's kind of nice. Uh, do you remember where the location of the news station was? This news case station was on a soundstage. Yes. The, uh, it's one of, so Parks had a big, um, they had a big, on at CBS Radford, they had a big stage. I think it was like stage 18 or something. And so the whole, the whole uh, city, you know, the city council government building was all one big set that I think was attached and um, that had a ceiling. Most sets don't have ceilings because they can drop lights in. But for parks, they wanted it to look like an office. So they put an actual ceiling in. But then attached to that, there was the Pawnee Today set. Um, so uh, I did that. Um, and then I come back. If I'll come back and answer more questions with the three other episodes that I was on. Because I've got more stories. I haven't even talked about my time with Nick Offerman. So hit me up if you want me to do tell you about this this <laughs> episodes with Nick. Um, here we go. Sorry. Anything to promote right now or shows you want to talk about? Um, I'll promote my podcast. Um, I host a podcast with myself and another comedian, Alex Enriquez. Uh, he, if you've watched the show Jury Duty... And uh, in episode five, there's a gentleman who testifies about uh, part of my French masturbating during the movie Pacific Rim. That's my buddy. Pacific Rim 2. That's my buddy Alex. He and I do a podcast every week um, about um, fandom nerd stuff. We call it the cape space. So superheroes wear capes. Uh, Darth Vader wears a cape. People who fight goblins and dragons, they often wear capes. That's what we're talking about. It's really funny. Talking about, uh, you know, all the nerdy stuff that exists in the world now. And um, that's what I'll promote. Uh, thank you for this. I had a great time. You're <laughs> great time to talking to myself. Uh, I love talking about myself. No, it, but it, if you need me to do this again for any of my other episodes that I'm on, I will happily do it. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. That was Yay. awesome. There was a lot of great stuff in there. Absolutely. I actually didn't listen to that one um, all the way through. I just edited the beginning part of it. Um, so that I was taking notes as he was uh, talking. First of all, for those of you who don't know, Matt Besser is one of the creators of the UCB. So when he said that he was in a show with Matt Besser, um, that is who that is. Um, and Amy Poehler. I mean, you're working with the greats there. That's amazing. Yeah, serious. Um, and then, uh, yeah, what he was talking about, side note, um, I, I just wanted to, I'm sure people caught it, but I asked particularly, and what I usually ask is if the lines from the audition are the same as what is on the day and mm -hmm. because sometimes it changes or sometimes they add stuff and, you know, that may, and so I'm, that's why he was talking about like, you know, swinging to Chris Pratt, um, when he improvised or whatever, um, because I'm always so curious, like how it changes from audition to set, um, and then, yeah, that whole people are the character thing, that really resonates with me because I feel like, you know, with actors, you have to kind of convince yourself, well, not convince yourself, but train yourself to know that it's the truth that if a role is meant for you, it's meant for you. What's meant for you mm -hmm. will not pass you. And that is so real. And I that was one of the things that I think I learned in this this past theater show. Like so much of my character was stuff that I pulled on from my own experiences. Obviously, like she was a little bit more brash and like, I don't know, sensual because it just was the character. So but like, you know, it's like I had a lot of stuff that I pulled on that I do, you know, yeah, and it, yeah. that audition, by the way, and I'm just saying this to actors, too, but it goes for everybody. But like that audition that I did, everything in that audition goes so hand in hand with what that character is. And it has to be so the margin for like not error, but for like not I don't know how to phrase it but if it's not like right in that margin your audition matching that character it's just not always going to work out like you know like that audition just might not have shown exactly what that character needs and so that's kind of something that I'm learning too where I mean not learning I knew this but to see it in action to be like mm -hmm. everything in that audition was exactly what I did in the show is like oh okay I guess I get it. But also, like, it sucks because, you know, it's like yeah. the amount of times that that happens, it's a numbers game. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, so I'm really glad he said that. And then the when he, uh, Chris Pratt was dancing around singing "Feel Like a Woman," that's a fun callback because that's the one that the janitor sings or is playing yeah. <laughs> when they come in to take out the trash when Lil Sebastian yeah. dies. Um, and then the second team and first team, I think people know, but second team is usually the stand-ins, and that's where pe- the crew is getting the lights and all that stuff. Um, and first team is like the people that are actually saying the lines and the actors that are going to be on camera. Um, when he talked about Rob Lowe, though, that made such sense to me because you guys have heard me talk about Rob Lowe and how on the podcast when they were doing it, when Rob Lowe and Alan Yang were doing the podcast, he totally is like, I've been doing this for 25 years. I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm very right. like, you know, a little, he doesn't know what it is to be a civilian anymore. Like he, right. and he kind of shows that whether it comes off cocky or not. I don't know. I think he's a nice guy. I do think that, but he definitely has that of like that air, that air. So anyway, I'm glad he said that. Not that that's what Kenny was saying. That's what I'm saying. But thank you, Kenny, for solidifying that for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But no, it. W- I'm sure he was great. So Kenny, thank you so much. We will definitely be hitting you up. Um. And I just spoke a bunch. So, Maddie, if you had anything to say, you can. I I just loved hearing some positivity about Adam Scott just because it's not that nobody's ever been positive about him. Mm -hmm. It's just that I think a lot of people have been like, well, he was kind of in the zone. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really interact with him. So it was really cool to hear like, hey, he came over and introduced himself to me. And he was really nice. So Um, and then side note, if you haven't seen Guardians Volume 3, I cried Aww. like the whole time. I haven't watched it yet. So, yeah, it's it gets you, man. Okay. I don't know if it's my hormones too, <laughs> but I it just it rips you up a little bit. Aww. So, is it the last uh, one? I, you think it is the last one, right? Like they're not making so it more. they make you feel that way, and then there's like one of those end scenes where it's like the Star Lord will return mm. or whatever. So I don't know what that means. Is he going to return in? Uh, a different movie is he are they all getting back together i don't know because he he uh, that's a spoiler okay okay well i'll so, watch it and we'll talk yeah. about it <laughs> yeah so awesome okay yeah. well thank you kenny for letting us know all that information i really yes, love it you. and i can't wait to ask you more questions about nick offerman and the rest of your scenes so mm-hmm. um yeah, for real Moving on, there was a deleted scene here. Like, there was an alt of showing how much Pawnee is inside of Leslie, literally. Um, Leslie is holding her hand up to Joan, and Joan is, like, dry heaving because I will... Okay, I just needed to paint the visual. I know it sounds weird, but, okay, just listen. (laughs) I've got limestone in my hand from when I wiped out on my bike right near Pawnee Gulch. I literally have a piece of Pawnee inside me, and it floats around right under the skin. Touch it. Move it around. It's like a tiny little caper. I get it. <laughs> and Joan is like throwing up because uh. her <laughs> Leslie's hand is in her face. Oh my god, so right. funny. Oh my gosh, that's that's so funny. Uh. All right. Well, so now we've got this last little montage um, of when she's reading the ending of her book kind of as a voiceover over all of them having waffles in the office and dipping and cheersing waffles and syrup is everywhere. And it was so cute. Um, Side note, I... The I guess the I want to say I really commend the uh, camera crew slash the writing and all of it, because when she was talking on Joan's show, um, I had the realization that Ben and Leslie haven't talked at all this entire episode. Yeah. Until, you know, well, not even I just realized that when Ben they is just smiling, interact, first of all. And then secondly, mm-hmm. the waffle thing, they have this little cutesy look, eye contact mm-hmm. moment. And you're like, oh, fuck. You almost forget they had a romantic moment. Like, for sh- yeah. Because she's so consumed by this birth certificate business. And he's so consumed and I by think he is too. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I just love that you saw the camera catch them glancing at each other. It's so good. We really needed that stolen moment to keep that alive, too. Yeah. To really remind yep. the audience, like, this big thing this is happening <laughs> and they can't be together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I got really emotional too. Again, see, it's not just pregnant women. <laughs> but I got so <laughs> emotional when she says, um, like, I'm, I'm not crazy. I know it's mm-hmm. not Paris. Like, it just makes me so like 
uh, sentimental to think about when you make, because that's something to me that I really respect and I didn't used to respect this. I can say that boldly and like vulnerably because I did not used to respect people that stay in their hometowns. I was like, why are you doing this? Mm. Like there's so much more to do and I really judge them hardcore. Yeah. Um, but there's something noble I think about going, well, noble is not the right word. There's just something about um, people that visit other towns and then choose to go back because that's what makes them happy and that's where they feel right. like they thrive. Um, and then they can still visit and go on. I think the thing I was judging most was that like they're the closed mindedness of not traveling other places, but there are people that mm-hmm. travel and choose to come back to their hometown because that's what makes them feel good. And that's something yeah. that's really important. And I just feel like It was really cool for Leslie to show that she's not unhinged. She knows this place and she chooses this place. And that's what makes it better. And that's what makes her the right candidate. And I thought that was like so special and moving. It is very special. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Agreed. This tag is so sad. (laughs) Jerry coming in. I know. He's in the same clothes, Holly. Same clothes. He says he missed his daughter's birthday because he's been running around trying to get all these interviews and trying to figure out the inaccuracy that Joan was talking about. And no one filled him in that it's been solved. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, let's, and she doesn't correct him. She just lets no. him leave again, which makes me so sad for him. It does. Uh, OK, I'm going to end this by reading the afterword if you are ready. If you had any other. Yes. Things, though, um, we can talk about it, but I'm ready. OK. It also has this, like, newspaper kind of vibe. I feel like you can kind of see the color is not, like, completely white. I don't know. Yeah. It smells good. Okay. <laughs> Afterward. Look, I'm not crazy. I know Pawnee is in Paris or London or Chicago or even Indianapolis. I know there are prettier towns and more vibrant cities and more scenic drives and better destinations. I know that to an outsider, it must seem like a waste of time for someone to spend her life defending a place that is in some ways indefensible. And it probably seems downright loony for that same person to spend six months slaving away to conscript all of her friends and coworkers and to write an entire book about that place and all of its historical oddities. I get that it maybe seems that way to you. And I don't care. I was born here. I've lived here most of my life. And I love it. I love it to death. (laughs) It's a great place to live and work. And serving the goofballs in this town is an honor and a privilege. One I wouldn't trade for any other job. Except for one where I get to serve them from Washington, D.C. I will take that job happily if you're offering. Which foreshadowing. Hello. Yes. Because in the words of one of the all-time greatest Pawneeans, Mr. Ron Swanson, when I asked him if I should accept an attractive offer to work in Eagleton, you'll get a lot of job offers in your life, but you only have one hometown. Yes, every place in America has a story to tell, and many of them, I'm sure, are fascinating. And yes, the world's great cities hold endless joys and adventures within their borders. And yes, every town claims its diner's waffles are the best in the world. But somewhere, in some town, there really are the best waffles in the world. Somewhere, there's a stack of waffles so delicious and rich and golden brown and wonderful that anyone who tasted them would decide never to leave that town. Somewhere, those waffles exist. Why can't it be here? Leslie Nope, October 2011. I love it. So I love that line. Why can't it be here? Why can't I love it be that line. here? It's so special. Yeah. Oh my god, I loved it. Okay, and I know I said that that was the last thing, but I had one other like there was like a census report um that I really wanted to share with you. Um oh, okay. So it was incorporated in 1817. Um okay, the population 66,218 plus or minus 5,000. 5,000 and thought- then it has like a a foot That's note. a lot. I know it has a footnote and it says there were some problems with our local census form collector. He turned out not to be super reliable and traded some of the census forms to this weird Russian guy for cold medicine. Oh, what? <laughs> um, so it's like give Creed or take was the weird people. Russian guy. That's still a lot of people, though. Sixty six thousand. Yeah. Minus five thousand is still sixty thousand people ish. So. I don't know. That's a decent amount. Yeah. It's more than like a small, small town, you know? Right. Right. Well, that was born and raised, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Crazy life transitions for literally everyone on the show Mm -hmm. and on the actual show of Parks and Rec. So. Yes. Yeah. This is wild. It's so wild how it's all like everybody's having life transitions, including Leslie. Like, this is a big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. What a universal moment. Well, 
Um, I don't know uh, when the next one will be, but uh, we hope that you had slash have a fourth of J- great Fourth of July if you celebrate. Um, and yeah. uh, thank you to Kenny Stevenson and to Elizabeth Sandy for sending in those voice messages. We will definitely hit you up if we have any other questions. Please go to the show notes and make sure that you're following Kenny's podcast. We'll tag them as well. And um, I don't think Elizabeth has an Instagram, but we'll tag her IMDb and everything and keep an eye out for her. So thank you to everyone for your patience and and we just appreciate you and we're excited to be back. Yes, and we will see you next time. Okay, we'll see you next time. Happy um July. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> there's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too.